<laughs> Did you really? And we're live. And we're I'm, live. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you see us both in this little camera right here? Are we both in the shot? I can't yeah. Tell. Yep. Oh, okay. Ooh. Perfect. Now it's black. Oh, did it go black? He's got boop. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Brought to you by Tivoli, America, or uh, the world's first amusement park hmm. in wow. Copenhagen. Denmark. And you still have that cup, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> I remember the, the the Civil War when I was in. Yeah, <laughs> it's been recorded. Yeah. It's been recorded. Oh, is it? <laughs> I got the whole shit and everything. You know what? <laughs> Tivoli means backwards. No, I, think I love it. Oh, it oh. does. Oh. there you go. Now you know. Mm. <laughs> I'm all reading it like ev evo. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> yeah. Trying to put uh, an accent on there and everything. Jeez, but yeah, so. Hey, what's up, guys? So this is Spock and Dino, and we're here with the one and only. Hi, my name's Mike Meyer, sign painter, formerly from Minnesota, now from Iowa. Ooh, Ooh extraordinary! Forgot that part. Idiots out wandering around. That's what we are. <laughs> that's yeah. That's Welcome to the Behind the Brush podcast, and uh, we're gonna keep going from here. You guys have tuned in <laughs> to some wild stuff already. So. It's great to be here. It's Hotter than the hubs of hell, but that's Phoenix, and and I'm loving it. And it's only 112. Oh yeah, it's just typical, <laughs> typical June. It cooled down. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. So, oh, one thing that um, you guys are driving around in that bus and with no AC in there, huh? It does have AC, but we haven't used it enough to see if it actually does work. Oh, oh wow. But I've never really used AC. I always just roll down the windows. Yeah. Even in the winter, yeah. I like that. That cool air, and you're talking cool air. Have you, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna find it here. Yeah, have you no. <laughs> have you tried rolling down the windows here? <laughs> I, I did, and it's it's a heat. Yeah, it somehow make a it difference. comes in. You know, I've always had Chevy Astro vans, and I don't oh, yeah. have one anymore. But when you get a Chevy Astro van anywhere from like Kansas on up, the handles will snap. Oh wow! Oh yeah, on the doors. I always yeah. go to the junkyard and get extra handles. And then now this this bus only really has one handle, and then the other side is the doors come out. Mm -hmm. And right when we left, we went to go get gas. We're four miles from home, and we went to use the door, and it wouldn't work. I'm like, no. Oh. So we got out the other side, and then Caleb just gave it a good whack, oh. my son, and now it works. There you go. But when we got to Phoenix, 25 hours later. Oh, yeah. The back tire was hissing either, Ooh. or there was a couple of cats inside the wheel well. <laughs> no, I love cats. I got two cats. Mm -hmm. So we got to keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know there's a lot of tire repair places out there listening, so we'll be coming to see you soon. Just mm -hmm. wave That's a flag. Cool. There's a there's a ton of them here in Phoenix. Oh. It'll say Yantera on the, on the front yeah. of it. That means tire. Mm. They're, <laughs> they're, they're all hand-painted. <laughs> yes, I, I thought it would say Bendejo. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what they're going to call you. When you come. Oh, I thought that meant lettuce or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, Bendejo. Can you put some Bendejo on that sandwich? <laughs> Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> Por favor. That's, that's a, a traditional Mexican greeting here in Phoenix. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought it was puta. Something oh, that's, that's what the, the women, that's for women. Oh, it's some kind of sandwich, right? Yeah. Pita, puta, it's just a slang. It is. It's all the same. It is it's how you make too. a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. You're traveling right now, aren't you? I am. This is the first workshop of the Nine City Tour. Nine City, really? Nine. And I used to, since the Sign Painter movie came out, everybody was really on, you know, wanted sign painting. It was heavy, hot and heavy, and just great. And I met this... Sam Roberts, an Englishman in London, and he said, I'll organize these for you if you want. Sure. And it just took off. And we're seven years straight. Really? It's been I that do long, 20, huh? 25 workshops a year. 
wow. for like 10 to 15. I did one workshop in England of Australian kids, 23 kids, and they were jet lagged. A lot of them by lunchtime were laying on the floor. Oh yeah, I imagine. And the bus driver who knew nothing about signs came over and he said, he was English, he said, I'll have a go. I said, oh, sure, you wanna do this? He actually was doing pretty good. So a lot of times in these classes, they say, well, you gotta have all this ability, right? No, you don't have to. I show you from the ground up. So even if it's a somebody who's experienced, there's something they can learn. And what I've learned being a teacher of this, I learned something from them. Yeah. So yeah. I, you don't know it all. If you think you do, then you're done. So that's what I tell people is you're going to teach me something. I will hopefully teach as much as I can to you because this is about sharing. So anyway, I did these workshops for seven years and then COVID stopped it. Otherwise we'd probably be still going, but I was doing a majority of them overseas, mm. like 16 different countries. There's sometimes I would be on 16 different planes within four weeks and trains and it just, Wow. And it was all done in English. Everybody really? overseas, you know, Poland, Belgium, Norway, Stockholm, Sweden, you name it. I'm like, does everybody understand me here? Yes. Okay. But they want that American look. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And they use a lot of stuff over there that, that's in English, which the best education is travel. That's what I learned. And seeing all that, I was just like, Wow. But, you know, what, what I really didn't know as an American living in the Midwest, um, the overseas people learn their English from movies. They're taught it in school, but the way they say it, because I was like, oh, are you American? They're like, no, because they speak in an American accent. I was like, how did you get that? Well, watch movies. Oh, yeah. Burt Reynolds, Clint Eastwood, all this. I'm like, really? And then some that have an English accent, they've been watching English TV. Monty Python and this stuff. It's like, wow. That's and, how they taught themselves. Huh? Yeah. And <clears throat> and then a lot of it with the ability of the sign stuff. I thought it was just going to be people from sign shops. Here, go learn this. I uh, There was probably 5% that came from a sign shop. The other one, the other 95 was tattoo artists, graffiti artists graphic designers, and 85% of the class was female. Really? It was just, wow. Because graffiti to me was some kid jumping over the fence, spraying a train, and getting in trouble. Over there, they're making big money. Mm -hmm. And they would show me stuff they did. I'm like, so what brush did you use? We don't use brushes. We mm -hmm. use spray cans. And they showed me all the caps. Yeah. I've still never used it, but I see it. I'm like, what? And that's how a lot of those big companies, Colossal in New York and Looking Good Studio in Warsaw, Poland, that's how they start. Yeah. And they even went over to New York and sat with Colossal for a week, say, how do you do this? We want to do this in our country. So they showed them. They went back and now they're like the Colossal of Europe. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the thing awesome. about the sign painting community is very small and very tight. And that can be good, can be bad. But there's a lot we can train and show each other. And that's what I tried to do besides just the basics of showing what lettering that I know is talking about the real life stories. Yeah. I mean, even when the last job, we didn't finish this wall job we were doing in Ireland, but my son started working with me and, and he sees and feels the frustration when the customer comes out and says, every day changing something and something and he's like, Dad, I don't know how you can take it. So patient. I just want to... I said, I know, but that's 40 years of doing this. That person, if I don't make them happy, I'm not going to kiss their ass. I'm going to stick up for myself. No, we got to do it this way or that color won't work. Yeah. But still, it's got to be, I'll do that. Because then they become the silent salesman. Who did your work? Oh, it was him. He was good. But nothing fake. I told her everything. I said, look, I want this to look good for me, too. If, if it does, it's going to look great for you. Yeah. Because I look at it through sign painter eyes, and you, you just want this nice. It's crazy, too, because <clears throat> in pretty much every art scene, whether it's sign painting or painting murals 
or mm -hmm. even you know pinstriping cars or whatever it seems to be the same thing you know all around like yeah. when i started pinstriping i always told myself well once i, I hope like i can't wait till i get good enough to where you know the client's just going to be you know happy with it whatever i do you know yeah and then i hear people that have been doing it for years like you that still go through the same thing and oh. then it's like and i and i i hear a lot of up and coming artists that get frustrated with that as well yeah. you know even like graphic designers like you yeah. know there's even memes about it where yeah you know the the customers asking you to make it pop you know or yeah you know like just it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it mm -hmm. uh somebody somebody that hires you to do it will always not everybody but there's yeah. always going to be that person that thinks that what they have in their mind is better than whatever you're going to create for yeah. them. even though you've been doing it for 30 years you oh, know it's so it, true how long have you been uh, painting signs for actually well i probably piddled around in my dad's barber shop since probably grade school and just i want to do that how's that work and do this and then it finally became no i want to do this dad mm -hmm. oh okay well here, try this. And then pretty soon it was because he did it in the barber shop and he was a barber and in between haircuts he would do signs. So they're like, hey, George, I need another sign and give me a trim. Okay. You know, why don't we have the kid try the sign now? Mm -hmm. Oh, he does it? Yep. And I, I was so tickled. It's like, wow. <laughs> and the old man give me a little money. And like, you can do this? Then it was, let's go to the stock car races. Every car was hand lettered. Oh, and isn't it great? what a candy store let's go to this track and can we go in the pits i want to look and then i i sought out all the painters when i got my driver's license i skipped school went and found my idol went and talked to him and we became friends but he was still kind of rough and gruff but when he passed away his daughter called me and said he wanted you to have his brushes wow uh, what and a lot of people that have been doing it for a long time that this is all all going by by experience like i mm -hmm. when i started doing this i would reach out to people who were already doing it for a living yeah. and try to get tips and most people would just you know give you the bare basic answer mm -hmm. sometimes not even the right answer mm -hmm. and just to get you off their back they don't care they don't care who you are or that you're yeah. really trying to do this like i've been in love with lettering my whole life you know, I started with the graffiti thing. Even before mm -hmm. that, I was drawing black letter, you know, in old English because my uncle was in prison sending us letters. And I was, you know, I loved the artwork that he was putting on the envelopes. Yeah. Well, once I started, you know, trying to pinstripe and trying to, you know, do some sign painting, I would reach out to other people that were doing what I wanted to do. And, they, you know, they didn't care. They, they didn't want to yeah. teach me. I remember reaching out to you and you actually were like, helpful you know you, yeah you actually would if i had a question you would answer it you know and yep. and that's what i still remember mm. till this day and this was around 2009 you know when i was doing that and it's a trip because you remind me actually me and uh, uh dino were talking about this you remind us a lot of our mentor eddie torres because mm -hmm. maybe because you guys are from the same time period like same era like you guys were yep you know doing it same work at the same time thing. yeah yeah and that's the thing you know? right there it's like this information age is like we're, we're really privileged as a society of you know sign painters airbrushers and pinstripers because you can reach out literally across the world yeah. in an instant yeah you know immediate and, yeah and yeah. so there's a lot of stuff being shared and so people can learn sometimes not the good way yeah but they can still learn yeah. whereas back in the day you know everything was really tight-lipped i remember yeah. my dad's a pinstriper so i've seen it in the 80s you know he was really self-taught Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, he would get to go into a brush bash or something like that, and they might share things here and there. Yeah. But it was very like, you know what? Uh, I don't know if I should share anything with you because yeah. where do you live? <laughs> you know, that yeah. type of thing. Oh, you know? they're going to become my competition. Exactly. So, but now they actually, I mean, <clears throat> I know they have schools for sign painting, and I know they have a lot of uh, these seminars that are going on and everything. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion on, like, how does that affect, you know, what's, I, I know learning it in general is good just because you're learning it. Mm -hmm. But what do you think is like the, pre the preferred method? You know, go to a school, get a mentorship. It's really hard because there ain't many schools left. Yes. The only one really remaining is the one in 
Los Angeles. Great tech. Great yeah. tech. Because I've, I've been overseas and, well, first of all, in the States, I knew there was Butera in Boston. There was a guy in Fort Wayne, Indiana that did a correspondence thing. There was Detroit Lakes, Votech, where I went, northern Minnesota. There was Rocky Mountain School of Art and Design in Denver. And then there was L.A. Trade Tech. And there might have been something else in Portland or maybe another thing in California. And at the time, before computers, you thought, well, that's what you do. And, and a lot of things were done like that. Then when I went overseas, I found out, yeah, here's this school in Australia. You have to do this before you get your apprenticeship. Then you work out there, and then you get your journeyman, this and that. Same with New Zealand. And then in England, they had a school, too. All those are done. They're gone now. Wow. And I said, well, well, how, how are you learning this? Well, here came the letterhead movement from the States. Mm. And it's a seminar that maybe only is 20 minutes long, but it gives them something. And this was before the computer. And then it was like, well, how else are we going to do this? And I think it opened up a little bit more where they're realizing, the older guys are realizing, well, they can't just go to the school. They have to learn it from us or it's going to die. Then the computer came along and then they just said, well, the hell with it. It's gone now, and a lot of them threw their brushes away. And we still had letterhead meets, and, and it was, I saw the transition. Because mm -hmm. it was everybody going, well, yeah, he's right. I'm not doing this anymore. No, no, no. So I'd see guys, hey, you're a really good letterer. Come on, do this and that. Nope, I gave it up. But they had changed. I saw they had paint on their clothes and all that. But now they were clean, and they're like, no, I have a, a digital printer, and I have some people work for me. Oh, Okay. And, hey, here's a picture of my new boat, and I got a new truck. Oh, good. Well, that fits for you. Great. But mm -hmm. you're still a good lettering man. Well, that's one version. Okay. Another version was they weren't that great of a sign painter. Now they're even worse, but they're making perfect <laughs> letters. Mm -hmm. So they just, oh, this machine will do it for me? Good. I don't have to work. And it cheapened the industry. Another thing that happened was when you open up the magazine, Signs of the Times, it would say, Speedy Signorama, Signs of Us. Just open another 5,000 stores. Every wow. month it would say that. And they were saturating every, every strip mall had a new Signorama. And you have to pay the franchise fee and all that. And I talked to a bunch of seasoned guys like myself at that time. And we're like, what are we going to do? And we all agreed. It's like, it's going to go away. It'll fade. Well, all of them. Most of them went down, but some stayed. Just like anything, it's new. Well, let's try this out. Let's see how we can make the money. And then the greed comes in. Well, then computers used to be pretty expensive. Now you can get a plotter for a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the software, and because when I was in science school, it was, I want somebody that can go leaf, pictorial work. After a while, it became, what kind of program do they know? They didn't care if you had any of the skills of sign painting. My school in Detroit Lakes closed because they tried to get ahead of the technology train. Wrong. You should have did that for maybe two weeks. Here's how you run a plotter. Mm -hmm. And get back to the brush. So when I started teaching, which I never expected to do, I did a lot of soul searching thinking, well, if I was teaching, what would I do? I would just bring it back to the basic stuff and tell them the truth. Maybe it won't last very long. So what? At least I told the truth. And I'm still doing it now. But like we were saying before about the rejection and all this, you got to have a tough skin. I don't care how long you're in it. You can test the seasoned guy and he's still pissed about this job or didn't get paid. The business part is never written in any books. Because you can't. Because it changes. Yeah. But you still got to explain what you're doing and tell the customer, well, I have to buy this. And this, and here's my markup. Then it's going to take me this. Well, I saw you do it before. It doesn't take you that long. Well, that's because it's 40 years of learning to do it. Yep. But like I say before, and it's been proven, you're going to make more on this sign than I will. What do you mean by that? Well, look at it. It's what they first see. And divide that up. Let's say you're in, I've got signs that have been out there 20-some years. Remember when you, you wanted that and I sold it to you and you were, oh, God, that's a lot of money. 20 years ago and it was maybe a $600 sign. Look at how much that made you now. 
what show. else do you have that six hundred dollars exactly. that lasted that long? You know, you know, I went. This guy called me. Said I want you to do our window splash. Big car dealer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I went in there. I said, what do you want? Well, we want this and that. Quite a big job. And he says, can you give me a price on that? Yeah, sure, I can do that. Tomorrow, I'll stop back. So I went home, and I got on the phone, and I called the newspaper. Uh, Viking Oldsmobile, they get the, the, the back paper every Saturday. How much is that? Well, who are you? Well, I might want to take that ad and all. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's $5,000, and we're just one paper. There's three other papers there in. Okay, let me write that down. 15 grand. Then I called the radio station. Hey, uh, Viking Old sponsors the weather. How much is that? Oh, are you interested in that? Yeah. It's so many thousands. And it's on three other radio stations. Wow. So that times three. And then the news. Everybody watches the news. And it's the highest advertising money. Okay, the news is brought to you by Viking Olds. And then they have a commercial. So I designed... I, I made a Superman busting out. Instead of the S in his chest, it was V-O, Viking Olds. Drew everything out, and I came to him. He says, here you go. What do you think? Oh, wow, this is great. Awesome. Let me show it to my boss. Oh, how much is it? Well, it's going to be 900 900 <laughs> What? What? <laughs> I said, wait a minute. Can I just show you something? Can we go over to your office here? Sure. Here's what you spend on newspaper. Here's what you spend on radio. Here's what you spend on TV. And that, not everybody's listening to that station or want, or seeing that paper or, or, you know, watching that TV show. But if I paint this, it's here 365, 24-7 in the rain, snow, night, day. And you don't like my price? Well, I guess I've got, no, 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 no. I'll go show it to the boss. They didn't talk about price. I'm sure he showed the boss, hey, look at this. Oh, it's great. Yeah, have him do it. So he said, I, I guess he'll have you do it. Oh, you guess, huh? So I painted it. What did they do? They took pictures of it, and it was in their newspaper ad. Wow. The TV ad started with a guy like Superman. So here I am, the lonely little sign painter that didn't even get $1,000, and I've just made an advertising campaign for them you branded yeah he was uh, exactly. you branded them mm -hmm. and that's gold you know, especially in business and if you tell this to the customer or students like you don't always have to be this but you know what you have to be a people person too mm -hmm. you don't always have to but a lot of times when you're doing that in front of the public you're on stage mm -hmm. and they gotta you know yeah you're full of paint and all this but what i try to be is the guy that gets it done doesn't matter they come in my shop, they might have to step over stuff, spray paint, and there's crap everywhere. But I'm busy. Mm -hmm. Suppose you don't have time to do this. Well, it depends on what the job is. Yeah, I can get it done. What do you got? I try to draw it right there. You mean like this? And have a lot of stuff for them to see. Oh, you mean like that one there? Yeah, that's... Oh, yeah, I guess we'd like that. Also, have a four foot by eight foot with the measuring tape right on it. Well, you know, like a... I don't know, what's that? I said, that is a four by eight. Well, yeah, kind of like a four. I said, no, this, see, 48 inches by 96. That's it. Let's get this over with. Because a lot of people, they've never bought a sign. Mm -hmm. And they never will. It'll mm -hmm. just be one. They say, look, I'm going to try to guide you through this like a menu. If you're not ready, well, here's my prices. Think about the budget of it. Because you came here for a reason. You said, oh, I see your signs all over the place. So here's what we want. Okay. It's a fine restaurant. We come in here, we know it's going to be good. We know it's going to be expensive. Well, why? Because it has a value. The people ask me, what do you charge for that? Is it by the letter? Is it by the square foot? No, it's by the value. Mm -hmm. How much is it going to make for them? And I'm going to do my best for you. I really will. And there hasn't been very many where I just said, I can't do this. There was some that was just impossible. And then there's been some that's like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Oh, yeah. But I'll take it. Yep. Yeah. I do it all the time. I, yeah. Honestly, when I started sign painting, I took on some of the craziest jobs. Like, I took on jobs when I had just started sign painting that I wouldn't take today. You know? Right. Yeah, those things are heard know. universally through other I, artists yeah. as well. Someone reached out to me. I mean, I've done, I did, I did a menu for a restaurant that had 100 items on it. 
and my and I wasn't good at all. You know what I'm saying? Like I was sitting there freaking doing just what I thought was casual on this right. whole thing. And you know what, what what the worst part about it was is when I finished it, so the lady sent me a menu, right? Said, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the menu we have. Um but didn't tell me to start it yet. Well, I was like, oh, well, I have the menu. I have I have all the, the you know, the I had already bought the wood. I already had all the color, everything. I was just waiting for her to tell me to start it. And then I just told myself, you know what? Why am I going to wait for her to tell me to start this? She already paid me half. Like, this is going down. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did it. Come to find out um, about a week later, you know, I finish it. I take a picture of it. I send it to her. I'm thinking I'm going to surprise her. I just knocked this out and this and that. She sends me a message and says, that looks great, but that's not the menu. I said, you <laughs> sent me the menu. Right. And she's like, yeah, but um, we, so what, what happened is the family owns this restaurant, right? The mother passed away and one of the daughters opened up a restaurant. Okay. Well, because it was their mom. She decided, well, I'm going to open one up, too. But I'm not going to have the same items you have. I'm doing my own thing. <laughs> well, she sent me her sister's menu and Ugh. didn't have her menu ready yet, but yeah. told me that that was the menu mm -hmm. without telling me that it's not her menu. Yeah. It's a menu, you know? <laughs> it's almost as bad as my dyslexia. Oh, my bro. God. I had to. <laughs> I, it, it was the worst feeling ever to know that I just spent about probably a total of, like, 80 hours on this thing, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, trying to get the right letters and then not liking what I'm doing and then yep. wiping it off and then doing it again. And it, it was so much work. And, and you know, I call that sign painting scars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good because of that. You just think back and go, mm. and hopefully it's like, oh. and I've said it nicely to people where, you know what? It's not that I'm busy or, I'd like to help you out with this, but I don't think this is going to work. Yeah. Well, why don't you want to do or No, I just told you that. But chronic, um, what I had a saying, I put it on my brochure once, chronic nitpickers should probably seek elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's very nicey. And they're like, oh, some are offended, some are. Yeah. I, I've had to fire a few customers. Exactly. <laughs> firing it. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and that's it. It's like. We're all, we're both going to feel better if I just say no. And there's yeah. other people to do it. Yeah, I learned to say no now. Yeah, it saves you money. Another thing I yeah. do, one thing I learned early on, and I taught this to myself, but as as I got older and I started doing more, more work, I realized um, a lot of people do this. But um, after I would get a few jobs and I knew I was okay with the jobs that I was doing, I would if new jobs would come to me and I was already going to be busy anyways, mm -hmm. and I didn't really want to do those jobs, I would just give them a stupid price that I thought they wouldn't, you know, yeah. they wouldn't pay. And you'd be surprised how many of them actually paid it. Yep. But the good thing about that is you might not want to do those jobs, but now this is more money than you would have got yep. for doing it anyways. You know so much like, how, how worse you would feel if you did it? For not as much and you start doing it and then you, it weighs heavy on you oh, I'm only yeah that's me. rough oh i've done that that's why in the first classes i did I, I was like how many of you people in the class think you're not good enough to do a sign for someone almost everybody raised their hand i said but you'll do it but you think you can't charge enough for it because you're not that good yet. yeah because i was there too i used to work at a shop and i saw how much they made and i'm like what well, i'd never charge for that but I didn't know the overhead, the insurance. Mm -hmm. They got bucket trucks. They got this and that. That's why it's that. Yeah. But when I went off on my own, I was doing 150 bucks for four by eight. Mm -hmm. And the customer doesn't really know how good the sign is. See, we're concentrating on, like people have said, oh, I want to do a nice script because Mike showed me that and I'll show him that I'm doing this. That's great. But let's get back to the nitty gritty here. What did you get for that? I know it isn't all about the money. It isn't, but you just want, you got all giddy and you wanted to do it, right? What if they, they didn't like it and all this and that? You know how bad you would feel? Mm -hmm. So do the, the industry a favor by charging what it's worth. Yeah. Because a lot of them just 
for sale for lease phone number. Just I want it done because it's making money for me. Yeah. And you like, well, I saw Signcraft. I want it to look like what he did. And that's fine. You got to keep that mentality in you. But it it's so hard to climb back up that hill. So yeah. that person I did the 154 by 8 for, they'll come back. Hey, I need another one done. Well, it's 350. 350. The last one was 150. What's going on? I learned my lesson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And then they, because you know why they're coming back. Because you see them going to somebody else like, Oh, so he's doing the 151 now. Yeah, yeah. And it, those things, when I first got into the business, across the street from me was a guy who was about five years older than me. He had a hardware store. And he was mainly the plumber. He always had somebody just running the hardware store. Whenever they saw his truck come in, they're just, Zoom. hey, I need this, I need this. And he, he just wanted to fish and do a few plumbing jobs. Mm-hmm. So I went over there and I said, hey, how's it going? Good. And he said, hey, I got to talk to you. I said, What's up? took me in the corner he goes how's your business i said oh good he goes no you can tell me how's your business i don't understand he said does anybody owe you money well no do you know how many people owe me money here a lot i see you just starting out i don't want it to happen to you you got to be hard and you got to be mean sometimes but you do a nice job I do a nice job. Why can't we get paid for what we're worth? So charge your money and get your money. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. why did he do that? Why did he pull me aside to do that? And I've looked at a lot of things and, and I don't forget things. And I, I remembered that. Like 10 years later, he got cancer and it took him in like two months. Wow. And I bought another building and he came. I said, Mike, can you come and look at this? Here's a dying man. And like two weeks later, he died. He was a dying man, could barely breathe. He came down to the basement to look at the furnace. He says, okay, fill it full of water. Okay, turn it on. We looked at it and water come from underneath it. And I, is it good? He goes, you want the bad news or the bad news? Oh, it's a, we got to get a new furnace. And was it, did I feel bad about that? No, I was looking at a dying man. Yeah. Can't replace him. I can always buy another furnace. Yeah. I was just, it taught me a lot that day. Then they said, hey, he's pretty sick. You should get down and see him. And I thought, you know, I want to remember him what he was like. He'd know. Mm-hmm. He'd, he'd understand. And, you know, the day after he died, there was insurance people in town going, hey, do you need cancer insurance? I said, well, isn't that a coincidence? Why are you in town? Because he, you know. And yep, that, that's, another, man. that's another thing about owning a small business in a small town. You have to put up with the riffraff. They come in and the salesman and this and that. You can't. And some guy from high school, and they want to BS with you. It's like, look, I got to get something done. Oh, you're too busy to talk to me. Well, but that's all part of the flavor of what you're doing. Because mm-hmm. yeah. there's some people that came in, a guy came in, hey, I'm, I'm here from uh, Lutheran Church. We got that sign that says no parking. Yeah, okay. It was just a tiny little wooden sign. I said, here you go. And he says, well, how much is it? And I said, hey, have you ever seen gold leaf on glass? Uh, well, no, but I'm just here to pick up the sign. Come here, I'll show you. And I had the sign with me. I wouldn't give it to him. See that? See that? The gold on there? Isn't that shiny? He said, yeah, that's, I don't really care. I said, okay. You know what sandblasted on redwood looks like? Uh, well, no. Look, how much is it? I got to go. See, I sandblast that first. <laughs> he goes, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then I finally, okay, here's your sign. It's, hundred bucks or whatever. Two weeks later, a guy come in. Hi, are you Mike? Yeah. A friend of mine came to get a sign for the church and he said something about a sandblasted sign. Do you do that? I do. I'll show you right here. So it's educating the customer. A lot of them, oh, do you do that? And a lot of people are really, really stupid about, especially wayfinding stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, come on over. We need, nobody can find our place. I said, well, don't tell me how to get there. I want to find out for myself. Yeah. And then I come in, you know what? Here's what you need. Do you own the land down there at the end of the road? Yeah, I do. Well, we'll put a sign there. And you know what else we'll do? We'll use color. And we'll use shapes. Yeah. Really? I said, well, you said nobody can find you. The UPS FedEx can't even. Let's put big numbers there. Well, you can do that? I said, this is my job. Mm-hmm. This is why you want me? <coughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that, I can do the lettering in this and that. But you you have a problem, and you call me, and this is what I do. You don't think sign painters can do that? Well, I'm telling you, we do. Yeah. Because you don't know. Even, you know, I've had buddies, hey, <clears throat> Meyer, look at the bolt lettering I had done. You like that? I said, yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> well, do you do bullet lettering? I said, well, yeah. Well, I didn't know you did it because they didn't see me actually letter a boat. Yeah. You know, with social media, I'm kind of the same way. Like, there's stuff that I would post. Mm -hmm. And say if this week I've been posting a sign that I've been working on um, that was, you know, just, just a regular hand-painted sign. All of a sudden, this week or next week, I'll get another customer that will contact me about painting a sign. Mm -hmm. Next week, I don't post any signs, and I happen to post the logo that I designed. The next person that hits me up wants a logo. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, it, it sucks because I like doing, I like designing logos, you know. I like mm -hmm. hand drawing logos and then digitizing them or whatever. But I also love sign painting. Mm -hmm. But I also love pinstriping, you know. Yeah. So sometimes I'll pinstripe a car and I'll post that, and then all of a sudden I'll get a pinstriping job. What sucks is... These people know what I'm doing. They know what I do. And then if I'm not posting about it, then they think that yeah. I just stopped doing that. Yeah. You know? But I, I'm never going to stop. I, I'm doing it yeah. all because that's what I love doing. I, I'm mm -hmm. not all of a sudden doing a job that I don't like. You know, I'm not yeah. all of a sudden, you know, doing taxes, you know, doing people's taxes. And, yeah. you know, oh, I didn't like that. I'm just going to do something new. like Real estate. Or yeah. Something yeah. else. Yeah. Everything that I'm doing it has to do with, you know, with basically being creative but it's mm -hmm. stuff that i love doing and i'm even if i didn't post about it this week that doesn't mean i don't do it no more you know and right it, it sucks people forget really fast you know and it's and, like, and the word of mouth and the culture around them i walked into a home depot where i didn't have my paint pants on which is very rare and this guy goes hey meyer you stopped doing signs right it's no where'd you hear that we well, doesn't look like you're coming here to get any paint. Well, maybe I am. It's just I don't have my paint clothes on. I'm going to this function. Oh. Images everything. We well, don't know how many people he told. Yeah, he doesn't paint anymore. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, I do. No, I saw you him know? at the store. He didn't have his paint pants on, so right. I, he doesn't paint anymore. You know? <laughs> yeah, and, and the other you thing. You batted yourself. <laughs> what, what, what I found out when I moved, I just moved three years ago from being in the place where I, I grew up, mm -hmm. I was not born there, but I moved there when I was four years old. And my dad was a barber, so he knew everybody. And my uncle had a bar. You just grew up there and everybody knew you. That's good and bad because you grew up with these guys and they have become in the city council or the fire department or the school board. And they don't forget that fight you had out in the playground in fifth grade or you took my girlfriend at the dance. They don't forget it. It's like, we need this sign. Well, we're not going to give it to him because, yeah. well, why? And it happens. And I, and I know that's small town stuff, and that's fine. Well, it's like poker, you know. Yeah. You never forget a bad hand. Yep. But you forget all those good ones, you know. <laughs> that's right. So I did so much for that town. So many freebies. I painted the town literally. They forget that. Oh, 1999. I, I, I went, went to, to the, the, you know, pull, pull taps. taps. The, the, the dollar, we, we call it cardboard, cardboard cocaine. cocaine. Mm -hmm. You can win up to 500 bucks for just a dollar. Well, a lot of that money, we call them scratchers over here. Yeah, yeah but, but this, this is just pull it off. Oh, oh it's the British pop. So anyway, the money went to the fire department, JCs, and all this, and it goes to community things. Well, our town was known for a lot of people doing it. And we had enough to put a new fire hall up. So I went to those, and I said, look, I'm going to have this sign convention. I need some money to cover the portable toilets, the garbage, a tent, live bands. Can you help me? Because this is good for the town. If you give me this money, you'll see st uh, stuff that will be around this town for 20 plus years, I guarantee. And they all kind of scratch their heads. It's going to be what? I said, well, I'm bringing a lot of sign painters from around the world here. And we're going to paint that wall and this wall. Oh, and I even said to the fire department, you guys got that old truck. What are you going to do with it? Well, I don't know. I said, we can paint it, and then we can gold leaf it and show other people how to do it. Just donate it. Okay. So they did. 
they got they gave me like nine thousand dollars and it's all it legally has to go to a fund through the city because it has to be audited so anytime i get a bill for these things the toilets and all that i give it to them yeah well some of the people are like oh he's just pocketing that yeah no well, not. That, that always happens yeah but i thought i'd have 100 people at 400 people in my town of 800. Mm -hmm. the newspaper was there the tv i didn't have to tell anybody they surrounded the place it was like the woodstock of sign yeah i couldn't walk five feet there was somebody mike we need more red paint we need toilet paper over there and mike remember me from fifth grade this is great what you're doing thanks thanks <laughs> i had to run away i had to get a one of those four wheelers and run out of town for 20 minutes just to take a breather yeah we had the the church groups involved it just i could do no wrong i think i had blisters on my back they were slapping me so much this is great yeah and then the honeymoon's over after a few years and it's like when are you bringing them back yep well that was a one-time thing i mean if i bring them back it'd have to be a different time and then you got to donate money again mm -hmm. so i actually did it six years later they didn't give me nine thousand they gave me one thousand Oh man! I lost what? ten thousand dollars of my money. What was their their uh, justification for the reduction of donation? Same, same people saying, "Well, he, I had to charge the painters like two fifty a piece, but they also got five days of seminars. What? Eight hour days of learning from the best in the world. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no schools for it. <clears throat> it didn't go in my pocket." This guy gets so much for doing that one. We gave a little bit to this guy because he had to come from Australia. So, like, I wanted to break even. Like what you were saying earlier about, um, you know, you having to educate them. Mm -hmm. One thing that I feel like my mentor didn't mean to teach me, but I learned from him mm -hmm. is that, you know, he, he didn't have a problem teaching people what he was doing, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if he knew that he was, I, I have a feeling he did, but I don't know if, I don't know if he really knew that he was basically keeping the art alive and keeping it going by teaching right. us because I know he's taught a bunch of people and he used to tell us all the time, like, yeah, I've taught a bunch of students, you know, but yeah. they're not doing it anymore. You know, they don't care. Yeah. Um, there's, there's about what, five or six of us that actually stuck with, it, stuck with it yeah over the years and we're still doing it um and the way that i've always looked at it is something i learned is that the more people you teach the more it's it's basically educating um like the community or, or, mm -hmm. or you know the city or just people in general about the craft when i started right. trying to learn how to pinstripe it was the hardest thing to explain to people what i was doing yes you know they, they ask you Oh, what, what do you do? Oh, I'm a pinstriper. You know, even though I was doing like security part time, like I'm not going to tell I'm a security guard. I didn't care. Like yeah. I'm, I'm a pinstriper, you know? Yep. So I was telling people, oh, I'm a pinstriper. Well, now I had to get ready to explain to them what a fucking pinstriper was because mm -hmm. they have no idea what yeah. that is, you know? And it's like, well, a pinstriper, you know, have you ever seen like the side of the car where it has that little line? And a lot of times you hear like, oh, I thought that was a sticker, you know? It's yep. like. Oh, yeah. They, they well, a lot of times they are stickers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now, you know, the, the the older that I've gotten, the more I've been in, into this, I pretty much, when anybody asks me what I do and I say pinstriper, I really don't run into anybody saying that they don't know what that is anymore. Mm -hmm. You still have one or two, you know, every, you know, every now yeah. and then. But for the most part, I feel like it's getting out there more. People are starting to do it more. Um, yeah. and, and, and I feel like there was a wave, like, when the sign painter movie came out, yep. I feel like a ton of people started becoming sign painters. Like, yes. Oh, I, yes. I don't know how big that movie that movie was to the rest of the, the country or world or whatever. But because I was looking into being a sign painter and I was mm -hmm. practicing and I was educating myself on it, it was big in my world. You know, like, yes, I knew about it. My friends knew about it. Like. We knew a lot of people that knew about it. Yeah. So I don't know how it affected like the rest of the country that has no idea what oh, it is and doesn't care. Not only the country, the world. Yeah. I was so, like, what? But now there's people know what a sign yeah. painter yeah. is and they it, don't yeah. look yeah, at I, it. I like feel like it brought awareness to, because as pinstripers, oh, it's dying art. And I'm like, really? 
because it's actually gotten very popular. Really? And I have to explain to him, like, from my take on it, from experience, was that the rat rod scene really regen regenerized that, you know, re energized yeah. that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm like, well, why did it do that? Because I've seen that it was a generational gap. You had guys that were like pretty much on the verge of retirement. Mm -hmm. And then you had guys that were wanting to build these rat rods and they couldn't find anybody. Yeah. You know? There was nobody that was doing it any longer because vinyl took over the scene. Mm -hmm. So they started to research it themselves and like, well, you, they applied it themselves. And then out of that born new generation. Yep. Or they'd go to a car show and then there was a pinstriper there that yeah. was, yep. you know, walking around with a with a little uh, red wagon and a yep. toolbox, you know, or sometimes they'd really have a rare, you know? Yeah. But so in, in the beginning of the rocket oh, scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. it depends um, because... In California, it was really big. By the time it got here to Arizona, a lot of like people that I knew from California, they were already like getting into more of the like a lot of the rockabilly scene was get, going more towards like the the cholo rockabilly, and then turn mm -hmm. more cholo and motorcycle and yep. lowrider and motorcycle. You know, it's it's weird because they're they're all just kind of trends. You know, they kind of go up right. and down. Mm -hmm. But the the trend of rockabilly really did revive like the sign painter and pinstriper, right. you know? And relating to that, this is what I kind of do. Look at how barbershops have come back. Oh, yeah, it's yep. another one, too. It touches because, oh, yeah. well, we got to look like that. Well, who can do this? Yeah. And look at them now. Oh, it's yeah. big. And look at their windows and their signage. Mm -hmm. so, Tattoo um, shops as well. It, that's it. You know, it's like, well, they, they want the research. Well, yeah. now we can look back on it. Hey, who is this? Who's this? Um, the styles. I want that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Or we learn how to do it. Oh, you want to do that? I've trained myself to enough, enough to know. And that's a big thing now. I want this, but can you make it look old? Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the faux rust. Even overseas, I've been there. We're putting up this new building, and there's a stairway. We want you to put some big letters there. Like, they just tore down a building, and it used to say mail pouch or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. It's like, who's going to do that? Yeah. You know? And, and yeah, there's... There's digital stuff that looks like a sticker that they put on brick. Yeah. But yeah. still. I think know? that's the other thing that really brought back the sign community is when vinyl oversaturated the scene. Mm -hmm. You go down a boulevard and it got to the point to where all the signs looked blah and, and just bland and they weren't attractive anymore. So it was kind of like, you know, you saw a sign. It didn't really catch your eye. You didn't mm -hmm. really read it unless you were looking for a specific business. Most of the time, you just pass by it and not, you know, think twice of it. Mm -hmm. When but we see so much advertising yeah. that it kind of killed. Like, I know when I started sign painting again, people would say like, you know, oh, you're a sign painter. Like, you, isn't that just lettering? You know, they didn't right. know it was an art. You know, they didn't know how hard it was. And but, they think it's dirty. Yeah. The word painter. And a lot of them lumping into, oh, I need my barn done. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not that. Then when I went overseas, you're called a sign writer. Yeah. Really? That being custom. So what do you do? I'm a sign painter. What's that? Well, you know, lettering. Yeah. So what? I'm a sign writer. And the reason why they did that is when you learned sign or doing work with paint in the old days, mm -hmm. you, you, you learned faux finishing, marble all this, and you learned how to wood grain, and then you learn lettering. So they figured they should separate these. This is more decorating. Mm -hmm. So you, you're doing on personal houses and businesses. But the lettering is a whole nother thing, so let's just call it sign writing, not painting, because this is the painting part. Oh, I That's see. what I was yeah, explaining. So like, oh, oh, so you're sign writer. So you see their vans lettered up sign writer. Yeah. It's never painter. So over here, it's sign painter because of a different culture. And, and you know, in, in the old days, it was just like I've just been redoing a, a wall where it, it had gnarly letters, but that it was probably turn of the century. We just need big letters to say feed, yeah. gloves, mittens. Mm -hmm. And they just laid it out by the, the mortar of the brick. So the lady wanted it exactly like that, and you had faded paint, and it was lead. She says, well, what color should this be? He said, well, they didn't have a lot of colors, and they didn't do that. 
Mm -hmm. It's mainly black, white, yellow. Mm -hmm. So that's what we recreated. And that's another thing with the history part of it. We're the keepers of that history. Because the vinyl people won't really know. No, they don't Some even know how to do layout, you know? Yeah, well, the other thing <laughs> is, I learned this from a guy and some guys overseas. When I went to India on my own before I was teaching, some guy told me, before you die, you got to go to the Taj Mahal. Okay. So I did. Scared the living shit out of me. Really? Third world country, shit burning in the streets because it's a cow, comes from a cow, and they worship the cow. Little boys with an ice cream pail making a perfect round disc of shit, selling it to people, and then they would burn it. Like, what the hell is this? <laughs> And wow, you know, that's, if that's you want to see the real India, watch Slumdog Millionaire. It's, oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. perfect. It's a great movie. So there I was. I saw the Taj, Seventh Wonder, and all this. Wow. But looking at the signs, there was Pepsi signs everywhere in New Delhi. No Coke, Pepsi. And it was vinyl. There was some painted stuff. But I noticed, here's a plumber running with a pipe wrench. Well, that's the same clip art that's all over the world. Mm-hmm. So here it's it's making everything generic. Yeah. And I thought, wow. But if you get uh, like 10 people, here's somebody just starting out. Here's somebody total vinyl. You got somebody who's been a handcrafted gold leaf person for 50 years over here. Mm -hmm. And all these people in between go down a street and you go, wow, look at all this. This is beautiful. Well, that same old timer, he can design all that. And he can send it to a digital printer, and they're going to stick it on there, and it's mm -hmm. got the look. Mm -hmm. Then there's some guys in the middle that don't touch vinyl. They still do it by hand, sand, glass, carve, and there's the look, too. So I think we've got this whole gamut now that we see. It used to be only one or two, and that was it. Well, now the technology, what I learned when the computer came out was, okay, I can do this, and it can help me with these other jobs. But I realized all it is is a tool. Exactly. It's no different than the skill saw and my cordless drill in the back. Oh, I remember that. having cords and all, oh, this will be a pain now. It's so, we'll just shoot a screw in it. And is the battery charged in? It's so easy. But then you got to, no, wait, let's back up. Even to do that, I'm going to take this skill. And it, it taught me how to be a better carpenter. Because I don't want my sign to fall down and I don't want to hire somebody to I'm going to learn this mm -hmm. and I've done it where they've fallen down and I was like oh I'm sorry but I've seen it in the magazines like I want to be that guy if I can't talk to him I'll do it on my own I've done a ton of them wrong but now I'm starting to, well, I know that one won't work you've got to use six by six instead of four by four and yeah it costs more but I show the customer you want that look I can do that for you oh you can and it goes back to the same thing. I didn't know you did those wood signs. I only thought you did window lettering. <laughs> well, you'd be blue in the face. You'll never show them everything you can do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Signs, what a lettering. I mean, I've literally done, and, and when people ask me, like being on a podcast like this or an interview on TV or a paper, so what kind of signs do you do? I've done everything from letter a coffin to naked chicks. Mm -hmm. What? Well, think about it. I have. Yeah. It's a brush doing this. If it sits still long enough. You That's can what do they it. told me in the army. <laughs> See those rocks? <laughs> They're sitting still. Paint them. Why are we doing Do it till I'm tired. Okay. And when I volunteered, went in the army, there was a lot of really shitty jobs. Boy, that taught me the patience. Mm -hmm. I'm guarding those missiles, and it was like being a prison guard. It's like, why am I here? This is stupid. And it taught me, it's like, if there's a shitty thing I'm doing with signs, it's like, at least I'm not guarding missiles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or my buddy, we were doing signs for this turkey plant. He did some, I did some. Hey, I got mine done. Why don't you come over and we'll drop them off? Okay, so we went over there. Here you go. We got paid. Okay, that was good. Hey, you guys want to take a tour of the turkey plant here? Where There's a, some other people doing it too. Just jump in. Okay. So we're in the back. We got their hair nets on and we're going along. Here was these two guys, and their sole job was to cut the heads off turkeys. Wow. So everybody's like, okay, these Bill and Jerry are doing this over here. And they're just like, hi, whomp, whomp. <laughs> then, okay, let's move along. And we were at the end of the line, so we went over there. I said to the guy, hey, how's it going? He goes, how do you think it's going? 
<laughs> okay. He didn't like his job. So I told my buddy, you know, Pretty I'd say, strong, oh, huh? this guy, this broke. Uh, I ran out of this paint. How's your day going? Well, I'm not cutting the heads off turkeys, turkeys. if that's what you want to <laughs> yeah. know. And I thought, yeah, yeah, that's right. So if you keep that mentality and keep it fun, you know, just like the workshops, they go faster and it's more fun with a lot of people because everybody has a story. Oh, yeah. The two guys we just had were really quiet. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's okay because we're all, we're all thinking while we're doing it. Yeah. But they're listening to the stories we're telling. Oh, yeah, definitely. And they need to hear it because they'll remember that. I yeah, remember I was, you said this and that. You know, I was telling them today because um, the guy that came from New York, mm -hmm. he's taken a lot of uh, a lot of workshops already. Tim, yeah. Yeah, and I was thinking, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him, you know, how he feels about the workshop and like the workshops that he's taken. And I asked him, I was like, you know, how was you know the workshop in L.A. or how was the other workshop? And he started explain or telling me about the workshops, and I said, well, hey, you know. I, I really love, I don't know if you could tell, but I really love listening to stories about, you know, where Mike has been, the things that he's done. And mm -hmm. I'm, like my favorite part of this workshop is just listening to these stories. Mm -hmm. I know we're learning and all that, but that's like me that like, you know, yeah. and, he, and he, he pretty much said the same thing. He's like, yeah, man, I really like that. I learned a lot and the stories are really right. cool. Cause I, in a way I was just trying to get it out of him. I wanted to see if, if, if the stories resonate with him too because i know he's super yeah. quiet you know yeah so it was pretty cool to you know to hear him open up and actually you know that's say that reminds him. me i did three classes in munich germany and it was for a, a school but the public could come into it so sam would my agent for it he said you got a full class in munich you go there after switzerland all that. okay so i go there and everybody met outside, and it's this medieval, huge art building, you know, Man. just wow, in Munich. And I am the class instructor. I will take you up. We all had to go in the building at the same time. It was 15 of us. Go up three, stri three stairs. Oh, and, and big stairs, too. I mean, medieval kind of. I was. I had to stop halfway through. It was like... <laughs> Then we get up there and and everybody had to stay together when we went for lunch we all went to lunch and they locked the door well eat the same place we come back lock the door you go up you learn five o'clock we will leave now you know well this first class was so quiet there's 15 of them mm -hmm. and there was even a couple of gals from la there who were going to school in munich so they took it oh. and i was doing all my stupid dirty jokes and everything and no response and i was feeling really shitty and it was over and, and sam gets everybody got this survey and they would send it back to sam because i'm at the airport going to the next i think it was paris after that and he goes well how was the class and i said oh i don't know if we should go back there man that was it was the germans man they're really tough crowd <laughs> i mean I, yeah i'm german too but i don't know what happened and he said well maybe you should introduce and then everybody has a name tag and all that i said oh well you'd be happy to know that i've got most of their feedback and they loved it oh wow what they loved it your stories and this and that are you sure it was the same class he yeah. said no i'm, I'm not kidding I'm, so i was like what so to be a good teacher you've got to be patient with everybody yeah. there might be one person that's getting it and they're jumping up and down maintain then you go over to the other one. How you doing? They may be struggling. I'm with you. I'm here. Because mm -hmm. they email me all the time to this day from all over. And it's around the clock because I'm sleeping at 3 a.m. Ding. Hey, Mike, this is so-and-so from Australia. How do you do this? Uh, oh, okay. You do this, this, that. It doesn't take that much. And it helps them. And I get a lot of feedback saying, you helped me. Or I hated my job. I took your course. And now I'm doing sign painting full time. I'm like, you're kidding. That's great. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. But way back in my first letterhead meet, there was a guy talking to me because I went to the first one by myself in Texas, coming from Minnesota, and it was just locals. So they all had their four or five groups, and they're laughing, and I really felt out of place. And the first day, I was just in the corner, you know, taking it all in. And I thought, well, this really isn't for me. And that night, 
called back to the wife and she goes, well, how's it going? I said, I don't know if I should have did this. I don't know. I, you know, I'll be home tomorrow night. I'll fly back. And she goes, well, by the way, I took the home pregnancy test. And we're going to have a baby. I'm like, what? Oh, cool. oh, my God. I was all fired up about that. So the next day at the class, I just took a notebook and I went in the farthest corner and I wrote down, I was drawing pictures of diapers and cribs and names. Mm -hmm. This guy come over, he goes, hey, what are you doing over here? Are you the guy from Minnesota? I said, yeah, um, I'm just taking notes. Taking notes, you can't hear shit over here. Everybody's over there, get over, what's, what's your name? I said, Mike. You from Minnesota? Yeah. Well, my wife's from Minnesota, Albert Lee. I said, oh, really? So he was getting in, he was getting in the door. I'm like, what the hell? He goes, you know what Gold Leaf is? I said, no, I've heard about it. I've never seen it. Well, I'm doing a Gold Leaf class in an hour for you. No, 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 it's okay. Just, I'm fine. He goes, no, I'm doing it for you. Okay, but he goes, no, really, why are you sitting over here? I said, well, I didn't really think I fit in. And last night, my wife said, we're going to have a baby. He turns around, and he says, hey, everybody, this guy's going to be a dad for the first time. And I'm just like, hey, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> so here come his time. He goes, hey, I'm Jeff Cahill from Colorado, and I'm going to show Gold Leaf, but I'm going to do it for, what was your name again? I said, Mike Meyer. For Mike Meyer, you got any questions, wait till later, because it's me and Mike. I'm just like, oh, God. And I'm sitting right in front, <laughs> taking pictures with a camera where you got to develop the film. Oh, this yeah. is 1988. Oh, yeah. The good old days. And he did it. He showed me this, and the gold went on there, and the light went on. I'm just like, what? Oh, my. That's what this is? And it's like it, there was nobody there. It was me and Jeff. Yeah, you do this. You, you got it now? I said, yeah, yeah. And then he said, you know, how many of you people here I've seen this for the first time, and a lot of people were. He says, I'm showing this to you. Some of you out here will be doing what I'm doing. We don't know who it is someday, but you'll be doing this. And don't be the big head. Just do it and be humble. That's what I'm doing. Okay, you got it? So years later, I found Jeff Cahill, and I said, you know what you said back then? You didn't know who would be doing it next? I'm doing it next. He goes, yes, yeah, so? So pass it on to somebody else. I don't care. <laughs> and he's going to be at the next workshop just to help out. Really? Oh, that's sweet. Wow. He wasn't one of the original seven letterheads, but he was in there somewhere. But that's what it's about. Yeah. That's that's the core. Yeah, yeah, I did this and all that. No, I want you to show somebody else. That's. I want those guys that were here. You're going to show someday. It'll be, yeah, this big mustache guy had a bus, came from Iowa. It was crazy back then. You won't believe it. <laughs> you know and what? now I'm doing it. That's, that's so that's funny. what it's about, where you show stuff. And yeah, we, that's the, the message I'm trying to say in this Pied Piper kind of thing. If I'm going to do this, well, I'm going to have some fun. Yeah. I'm going to joke with myself and other people. If you can't do that, then, you know, you can learn it by just the book. And that's yeah. fine. And there's some good ones. But you got to be out here with the people and making. You got to watch me drop paint, drop my brush, stumble and shit. But you got to watch me do some nice lettering, too. That's what I want. See, I'm the type of person that went to school and could never learn anything by the book. You know, mm -hmm. I had to do it. I had to have a teacher that show me. Yeah. And and, yep. and also and it, it had to be interesting yep. to me. You know, I could not get into something that I just wasn't interested in. So it's 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 great to be able to take these workshops sometimes. Yep. This is by the way, this is my first workshop ever in my life. This is mine too. Great. Yeah. And. I've always Super. wanted to do a workshop, you know, mm -hmm. but I just yeah. never could. Never either. Either there was never any here, or I didn't mm -hmm. have the money to take it. There was always something in in the way, yep. you know. We've experienced what you were talking about, though, because we we started to do classes, just mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, beginners intro stuff, and we had people that were super eager eager to like really learn, and then they're passionate about it. Then we get this invitation from his buddy that, who used to his uh, his dad was a sign painter at the community college here. And we get there and we're like, cool, you know, we gotta teach a whole class of these students. Yep. And so when we get there, we pull everything out, we start explaining to everything. And then there's some guy doodling and there's, everybody's quiet and we're like, this is weird. Yeah. You know, they're not eager. 
you know, and some of them really got into it. Like, there's this one guy that really got into it. And this was and art. Was, like, these yes, were art students. Were, yeah. This was an art class. Yeah. And then there was this one guy who just never even wanted to bother with it. Yeah. yeah. And then you saw another guy that was kind of a natural at it. We're like, dude, that's some serious brush control. Not everybody can do that. And you go, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. As soon as that, you know, uh, clock hit th three or whatever, they were gone. Yep. Yeah. And we're like, wow, this is different. Yeah. You know? You know, and it's like, well... It's cool to teach people who want to learn, you know, but it's even better to get those ones who never expected to want to learn. Yeah. You know, and so when those people come here for the class, you know, some of them are like, I just kind of wanted to try it out. Yep. The ones that are cool are like, dude, I'll be here next week. Yeah. And then they show up and yep. you're like, dude, this is rad. You know, you, so it's fun. Well, we teach here too. Um, it's it's the very basics, like the mm -hmm. the beginner, beginner you know, curly Q, pinstriping. Sometimes we'll to teach brush the care. very, yeah, you know, brush yep. care. But sometimes we'll do, you know, old school or traditional or, you know, it's got a bunch of names, dagger style, whatever. But um, we do like the very basics, you know, and we'll yep. charge 70 bucks. You know, it's three hour class. You're, you're just mm -hmm. learning how to get your brush wet, how to yep. practice a couple strokes. And it's up to you if you want to take that and then practice at home yep. or come take another class because next class you take it's going to be the exact same thing it's basically more practice but we're here yep. so you can ask questions you know yep. and it's 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 nuts because you get to see the people that you know if if they actually want to learn then they're going to pay the 70 bucks and they're going to come and see what the class is about yep. and they might stick with it that school these were just students that had to be there to get their you know it's, it's yeah. part of their curriculum yep. so none of them even knew what the hell pinstriping was there was yeah. only one person which was a he was a bike builder he just he's he was like what in his 50s yeah he was up he was, there he was mm -hmm. like in his but 50s he was so amped oh so he loved amped. it in fact he ended up coming here to our workshop and hanging out with us on during one of our first friday you know hangouts he actually brought us all these books he mm -hmm. gave him he gave us oh, yeah. all of this and he became a friend, you know, he's a friend yep. of ours now. He, he comes every now and then. He doesn't even live in Phoenix. He lives somewhere up north. But, you know, whenever he comes down to Phoenix to visit, he, he went Prescott, which is like a couple hours I away. I think it was Prescott, yeah. Yeah. But when he's in town, he always makes sure and he comes into the yep. shop and says hi, you know. It's, and if there's it's one out of a hundred, you did your job. Yeah. And I love it, you know, and I you love know? it. It's, it's, and another thing, too, it's, it's, um, these people will come in and sometimes because the class is so cheap, mm -hmm. um, we've had like couples that came and just, just to hang out cause they had nothing else to do. Yeah. They signed up and they came and they, they were, mm -hmm. you know, messing around. And we've even, as, as, as short as our class has been, we've only been doing it for what we probably only had about 30 classes at the most, you know? Yeah. Well, it's been, uh, what, six months, something like that. Yeah. yeah something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as, 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 as short as it's been, you know, as short a time as it's been since we started, we've already seen like so many different types of people come yes. in. Like we've had the artists that came in just because they feel like they're like already the greatest artists in the world. Oh, and they're yeah. like, oh, I can do this. And then they show up and they're oh, just they get like, a oh, dose of humble shit. pie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're like, this brush isn't doing what I want. Yeah. Uh -huh. and then, said, <laughs> Look, that's why we got the overhead doors for your ego yeah. to come in. <laughs> what? Yeah, and they realize it it's all. hard. Yeah. It's not easy, you know, like yeah. they say, if it was easy, everybody would be doing That's it, right. you know? Yeah, you get those customers who are like, you know what, uh, you know, yeah, you charge me this much for like just doing that. And I'm like, here, mm -hmm. you want to try it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, are you sure? You know, because mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you could, if you, if it's that easy, you know, and then you can do it. You know, yeah. that's no yep. problem, you know. When, when tires go wrong on my vehicle, I go in there. And, so what do you want? Black and round. <laughs> what? I don't know. You do tires. Yeah. I do signs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't tell me how to make the sign. Yeah, what do you recommend? Oh, okay. And he just laughs. And one of them said, I wish I had more customers like you. Well, yeah. I think mm -hmm. that old lady there knows the difference between a radio and this and that. Mm -hmm. She don't care. She wants mm -hmm. black and round. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's totally what I do sense. with signs, too. Here's what you need. But I'll do what you want. But no, this is what you need. Um. Speaking of the schools, I forgot this one thing and I want to mention it. I was teaching in Stockholm, Sweden, and I was supposed to go to Oslo, Norway the next day to teach. 
and I had the night off and they said, hey, you ever been to Copenhagen? You should go check that out. You got tonight, it's not far away, just take the train. And I'm like, Copenhagen? You mean like the snuff? <laughs> they're like, well, no, Copenhagen, the city. Yeah. Oh, and what's it like? Well, you know, it's Nordic, kind of like we are here. Well, where is it? And they said, well, it's in Denmark. Oh, another country, I don't know. No, it's it's 20 minutes on the train. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know much about the geography here. Well, just go. You'll be back in no... Okay. So, the, the Sign Painter movie had been out probably three years, and I'm teaching a lot. So, I get on the train, and then there was a train strike. So, we had to get off, get on the bus. But I get to downtown Copenhagen. Get out. Wow, look at this. Oh, there's a ghost sign. Just started running around looking at stuff. I wanted a hot tea. Here was this alleyway. Oh, there's a sign. Uh oh. And here's these benches with chairs so you can have a drink outside. Here was this kid that had long hair and he was getting a haircut. And this girl was giving him a haircut. And they looked at me and I said, I looked around at the place. Um, Hi, do you guys speak English? And they're like, Yes. Can I get a hot tea here? You guys work here? And they just, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt the, the haircut. Oh, no, we do this until somebody comes in. Oh, okay, so this is a coffee shop? Well, sort of. You look familiar. Have you been here? I said, shit, I didn't even know where Copenhagen was 20 <laughs> minutes ago. I didn't even know it was a country here. Well, we're the city in the country. Oh, you sure you haven't been here? No. Well, come on in. So I go in, and there's posters everywhere. I'm just like, wow. Hey, what is this place? Well, we're a kino. Oh, like a theater? Yeah. We show indie films. Are you sure you haven't? No. Well, are you American or Canadian? I said, I'm American. So what do you do? I'm a sign painter. <gasps> That's it. We showed the sign painter movie here. You were in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> so hang on. He goes downstairs, brings out the poster. Here, you want this? I said, mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we'll get your tea right up. I'm sitting out there. Wow. And he comes out and he says, hey, you're probably here to teach. Yeah, I am. So at the college, right? I said, no, I have to go back to Sweden to fly to Norway. Well, you're not going to the school here? There's a sign painting school here in Copenhagen. Oh, wow. There is? Yeah. In fact, there's two of them in Denmark. What? You know what sign painting is? He said, well, after watching your movie, yeah. Really? Oh. He goes, I'll bring it up in the computer. It was called TEC and all this. That time, my phone and Sam going, hopefully you're in the hotel getting ready to go to the airport tomorrow. I said, no, I'm in Copenhagen. What? <laughs> Get back to Stockholm and all this. <laughs> but I found a sign school. He's like, what? What do you mean? I said, no shit, I did. I'll send you the link. So the guy gave me the info. I had the coffee. I said, well, see you later. I got the last bus back to the last train to get back there. Then I flew to Norway. We ended up doing three workshops in Copenhagen. Oh, That's wow. super cool, man. And so the big schools, Copenhagen, the little one, is in a place called um, Silkeborg. Does that mean anything to you guys? I couldn't tell you. Does Legos mean anything yeah. to you? That's where Legos were made. That's right. Yeah, they were made over there in Europe. Yeah, I remember the now. The airport, they made their own airport to ship their Legos out, and now it's an international airport. So we fly into Silkeborg. There's Legos all over the place. I'm like, what's up with the Legos? And they're like, you American? Yeah. You play with Legos? Yeah, I did. Well, this is where they were from. I said, what? So we did a class there, and they, there's even Legoland, like a Disneyland, made of Legos. Yeah, yeah. I'm like what so in the army i never got the chance to go to switzerland and i was doing the class in munich and i said to sam hey if i got some time can i go down to switzerland just the train and, yeah but don't get lost again i never get lost what do you, hey i found us a place in copenhagen so i go to switzerland wow zurich this place is swiss watches and it's very expensive this is cool and then i saw this shop it was all glass and there was an easel made of glass well, I got to see this. I open the door and go in. Here's this young girl. Greasy. Uh, yeah, greasy, whatever. And I didn't know they spoke 
their own kind of German. Mm -hmm. She says, can I help you? I said, oh, you speak, speak English? Yeah. And I looked and here was a, um, a pyramid of one shot cans. Oh, wow. I wow. said, oh, you, you sell sign stuff here? Just a minute. She goes in the back room and I'm waiting. Here come like six people. They all stand in line and they pointed, you're him. Mm. You're Mike Meyer. I said, I, I didn't know she was 14. Please. No, no, no. <laughs> you were in the movie. We sell the movie. Oh, yes, I was. Yeah. Well, well, what are you doing here? I said, I'm just taking a few days off from teaching in Munich. Can you teach here? Well, yeah, I, I, I guess so. I'll tell Sam. Who's Sam? And all. I ended up teaching there like nine times. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Just the best people. And I said, you know what? I got my brushes and stuff and the, the poster. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. Went to my Airbnb, brought it back. And I said, here, you can sell these here. So the global part of what the movie did is phenomenal. And the, the Sam and Faith, I told them that. I said, do you know the impact? I said, I'll tell you another story. I was doing a workshop in Berlin. So is Sam part of the movie? Like, did he have no. something to do with the movie? No. no, he didn't know anything about it. Was he like no. your agent then? Well, he was working in an ad agency in London. Okay. And he was quitting that job, and he didn't know what he'd do, and he started Ghost Signs, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, where he would right. show people these ghost signs. And he saw the Sign Painter movie was out, and he he uh, was friends with Ashley Bishop, who has brilliant signs in London, and I knew Ash way back at a letterhead meet in Scotland and he said hey I need you to come over here to help me with these stores it's, it's October we got to do a hundred stores they're called Pret-a-Manger and they were sandwich shops we got to hand paint in these I got a hundred stores before Christmas I need your fast brush get over here where are you I said well I'm in New Zealand New Zealand I said well you pay for the airfare I'll be there I'll work my ass off all right I'll get you on a plane so before I go I'm doing a letterhead meet in New Zealand. And the movie's out, and they were going to show it at a theater. And they said, hey, can you talk to people before the, the movie? And I said, yeah, sure, I'll introduce it. And she said, maybe we should have a workshop where you teach. I said, oh, I've never done that in my life. I don't want to do that. No way. She goes, well, you better learn quick, because i got 15 people lined up Saturday and Sunday. I said, what? I can't do that. She goes, well, you better shit i was so nervous did you ever think when you started sign painting um or even like at as you got better and better and, and and you started doing bigger signs and better signs did you ever think that you'd be touring teaching this stuff oh no way in hell what i dreamed of was the guys i saw in my first shop mm -hmm. there's the old guy had a cigar or a smoke and he came in and just did this beautiful stuff and he just went home and I thought, well, I can make that better and more fun because I'm really, this is great. And he's just, yeah, kid, whatever. Yeah. And I thought, that's going to be me. And then things went really upside down. And for a good reason, you know, here come the computer and all that. Well, how did that guy have approached that? He probably, oh, I'm done. Yeah. But because of the life that sent... Kind of like my mom. She was a talker, but my dad wasn't. So it was the opposite. So mom would always say there's every day is an opportunity to make a new friend. Yeah, like, that's yeah, very but, true. But mom, that, that dumbass down by the bridge, I want to just kick his ass. You don't know what's going on in his world. Yeah. So just be nice. And found out later that he was getting his ass beat by his old man. I see him like 30 years later, he comes in, hey, I need some vinyl on my van, mm -hmm. but you probably don't want to talk to me. I say, yeah, you were a bully to me in school, but what do you need? You're gonna, you talk to me? I said, yeah, here, I'll make this for you. So what? I mean, it's over, we were kids. So how you doing, what are you doing? You actually care? Yeah. You're Keith, right? Yeah. And your brother is Wayne? Yeah. How's Wayne doing? Oh, pretty good. So, yeah, see, we're all we're all people. Definitely. Yeah, I'm doing this, and yeah, you do some cool stuff. And he became a house painter. I said, "Oh, do you use this stuff?" And yeah, that's pretty good primer. See, see, we have something in common. No. And did you know that Jeff? 
that was in my class, a Val Victorian Mr. Smarty Pants. Yeah, whatever happened to him? I said, we both wanted to kill him back then, didn't we? Yeah. You know what he does? No. He's a paint contractor in Minneapolis. What? Yeah, he deals with paint. He went to the university, got the big degree, but he's working in paint. Wow. Oh, we say that to him. Oh, big shot. Thought you'd be some lawyer or doctor or something. Look at you. Mm -hmm. I work in paint. You work in paint. That's mm -hmm. not so bad, is it? He's like, oh, no. I know you got a garage full of Mustangs and Camaros and all that, but you always were money-hungry, greedy little prick. <laughs> we're in a bad pitcher and a quarterback, but we had some fun, didn't we? Didn't you always come over to our house? Well, yeah. Why? This was fun. Everybody came to our house. We had our own baseball thing in the backyard my dad made. We raid, we built model cars. We had boxing gloves. Shit, there was something always. The whole front yard was full of bikes. Nice. We never, when we went over to his house, you had to watch every little thing. We knew where the cookie jar was. Here, you, you uh, get his mom's attention over here. I'll go get some cookies and I'll meet you behind the house. <laughs> I mean, there's that kind of shit going on everywhere. But really starting my sign stuff was... Hand painting model cars with the toothpick to make them look like the cars I saw on the track Sunday. Oh wow! Identical, and my hero of the of the stock car world was named Carl Fenske, and his car was lettered by my stock car, my sign painting lettering idol Don Springer. Just Don Springer. Don right? Springer. It was two for one, so I'd go to the pits and talk to Carl, and he always had time for me. You know, he'd be drinking a big silo of Paps Blue Ribbon after he won. Hey, kid, come here. How are you doing? And I'm like, hey, Carl, how was it tonight? Oh, we whipped him again, didn't we? That's cool. And I made a model car of his car, and I was so scared. And I brought it to him, and I showed him in the pits. I said, I want you to have this. He goes, what? No, I can't take this from you, kid. Hey, you guys, it's Pit Man. And look at this. He even got the helmet, the same car. Wow, kid, this is great. And we became friends. He passed away. When I was doing a workshop in New York, I was on Facebook, and I got to letter his original car back in the 70s. It was in a junkyard. A guy bought it, redid it, and he said, hey, I hear you're the guy that could do this lettering on it. I said, are you kidding me? I studied these pictures. I know every stroke on this car because Don lettered this car. Okay. It was a red 57 Chevy. I lettered it exact. All the sponsors. And I even had, you know, Lettered by Don Springer signs. So I put lettered by Don Springer signs um, in respect to Don. Yeah. Mike Meyer. And and then it was at the, the track and people just, oh my God, where did this come from? Heaven? This thing is identical. Has it been a garage the whole time? And then they showed pictures. And Carl got to see it before he died. No, that is cool. Oh, that's even better. And he was just he was so funny. He's like, yeah, you did good, kid. But you know that F on the back should have made it a little bigger. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he was a he was a girl hound, too, and all that. But now his kids race, and they always say hi to me. And I'm like, you know, you should have me letter it like the old man's car. Get that final crap off there. Yeah, the old man said you'd say that a few times. I said, well, look at it. Is he like everybody else? Yeah. Your dad wasn't. Mm -hmm. Isn't he it, was, you know. Isn't it crazy how... I think, uh, you know, a lot of us, I wouldn't even say sign painters, but just there's there's people that I've met throughout life that are similar to the way that I am when it comes to lettering. I've been obsessed with lettering since I was a little kid. Yep. And like even talking to you this whole weekend, I've been, you know, like, oh, shit, this, this reminds me of like me when yes. I was, you know, pretty much every time like yep. even when i choose my restaurants if i see a restaurant that has a cool window with like cool lettering or the yep. sign is cool i'm like we got to try that you know we got to yep. try that place whether it's good or not the food might be shit yeah. but god i really like to go in and look at that <laughs> yeah and sometimes i'll go back even if the food is shit just because oh, yeah. i want to be around that stuff you know like yep. there's a uh what is it called i think it's called portellos or something like that out here it's it's a yep. it's a uh, That's what I was out here in Gilbert doing, a Portillo. Oh, really? Yeah, for uh, Right Way Signs in Chicago. Oh, wow, that's funny. The yeah. artwork was already done, but I'm like, hey, they did some cool stuff. Yeah, I want to try that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and I mean, and their stuff is, is uh, at least here, I mean, 
it, it's good, but it's yeah. a little more expensive than I like to pay for a hot dog, you yeah. know, but I still keep going back just because I want to be around it, you know. Well, there's, is, there's a barbecue place back home called Famous Dave's. I think there's some. Yeah, we yeah, have one here in Chandler. Yeah. So yeah. I got to know Dave because he found me. Okay. His, the guy that did all of them, he, they broke up and, oh. and he went to court and sued him and all this stuff. Because when he called me, he said, hey, I like your style. Maybe you can do work for me. I said, I'd be honored. I love your restaurant. And then the first thing he said was, if we go to court, I will win. Mm -hmm. What? We haven't done anything yet. You're telling me that? <laughs> I'll win. Okay. So we've done a lot of things, been mad at each other. But he's taught me a lot. He said, I'm going to bring the best out in you. There's times I wanted to just hit him. Yeah, and he would yeah. just say, you got spunk, kid. I like that. Like, what? Yeah. But here's a guy that has made millions. A millionaire. And he's lost millions, too. Mm -hmm. So, but he's a person. A lot of times we sat there and he was like, man, I just lost so-and-so million. He said, look at you. You, got, you get your paint kit and you drive home. And that's it. You know what the difference is between me and you? I said, what? He said, zeros. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of zeros behind this. You have one or two. Well, you're happy, and you can drive away. I said, well, you can drive away, too. Mm -hmm. You know how many people and franchises and this and that? The worst thing I did, he said, was to go public with my business. Really? But what I was getting at was, here's Famous Dave's. Love the lettering in there. Mm -hmm. The blues, the food. Great atmosphere. My wife didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Still doesn't. She likes this homemade one where it's, they just have one restaurant. Yeah. And all they have inside is like a couple of jazz posters. <laughs> so I call that the jazz poster. Where are we going to eat? Well, I suppose you want to have the jazz poster, but let's go have some fun and see. And she, you look at that stuff all the time. I said, well, of course, you know what you married. Oh, yeah. I want to there sit by go. that one window where the chicken barbecue and I can see the brush strokes and that blue. All right. All right. So, yeah. it, and, and that's how it is. And someday I'm going to have a letterhead meet and I'm going to have Dave there and he's going to do a speech because he does speeches for like colleges and, and high schools, but he loves sign painting. Mm. He, he always told me, he said, you guys bring the personality. That's what I want. Nice. So he actually sold famous Dave's. I don't know if he's even involved anymore. Yeah. Like he's done TV or radio stuff. But we walked in one. And he said, look at this. They got Pepsi here now. It should be Coke. And the menu and this and that. So very passionate about everything. Yeah. And the music. It shouldn't be that. Because what he had, he was really a stickler. It's like, no, it's got to be like this. And the mm -hmm. places were packed. Yeah. He had to wait. And he went out on the road doing cook-offs. And he won. And he got his trophies. Here's a picture of him with B.B. King and this and that. I mean, he was head of the, he's a Native American. He was the head of the Appropriations Committee and during George W. Mm -hmm. And he, there he was in the Oval Office with him. He was mm -hmm. even on Oprah's couch. Oh, wow. I said, look, I don't give a shit, Dave. Let me do my stuff and you cook. Yeah. <laughs> there you so, go. So he's a real person. And we, you know, I was like, God, I don't care if I do anything for you again. And two weeks later, he calls, how you doing? I was, what? We got spunk, kid. Okay, I need this done. And I'm just like, oh, oh, okay. So I admire somebody like that, and he showed me a lot. I love the guy. And he always says, I love you at the end of the phone calls. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, you know, it's if somebody say, hey, do you know any famous people? I say, no. Or I just say, you. And mm -hmm. there they aren't anybody. But I never say famous Dave because he really doesn't act like one. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. people are just people. When you start your yeah. business as famous Dave's and you're not famous, that takes some balls. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's like <laughs> so a you're famous? Pro well, not really. Yeah. Or like, we have the best of this. And I'll say, Dave, no, really. Is it the best? He goes, well, that's all part of marketing. Yeah. Like uh, Will Ferrell and Elf, when he goes in that restaurant, you did it. You got the best <laughs> coffee in the world. You did it. Way to yeah. go. And they're just like, what? <laughs> so why not? do that stuff i remember i had painted on one of my trucks once i was lettering a stock car and there was a special this is the life and times of frank sinatra the man and his music 
And I thought, hey, why don't I do the man in his brush? Yeah. Uh. Why not? That's still a guy from back home that says that. Man in his brush, what's going on? Hey, how are you doing? Because, you know, why not create something like that and have some fun? I've always been a gigantic fan of P.T. Barnum and circus, you know. Yeah. And I think it has a lot to do with, you know, the, the artwork and the lettering and all that. Absolutely. But it also opened my eyes to, like, you know, curiosities and, like, weird stuff, you know. Yeah. And uh, a, a lot, I have a lot of the old, you know, vintage uh, pennants and books yeah. and stuff like that. And I always wanted to just make a sign that said, like, the greatest painter on earth or some shit like that, you know, right. like, instead of the greatest show on earth, but Speak. little stuff like that, you know? Yeah, and you should go to Baraboo, Wisconsin. They have a, because it's a home of Ringling Brothers. Oh, yeah, the, the museum there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the posters, the artwork there, it's original. Huge. Yeah. They even have the cards, Man, right? Like something the, else. Yeah. The cards that yeah. they used, yeah, it's, it's, I've. I watch it a lot on YouTube. I, I mean, there's people that go there and they'll do YouTube, you know, videos on it. Yeah. They'll mm-hmm. do a little tour of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I've already seen all of it on mm-hmm. in on video, but yeah. every now and then I'll see a new video of the same place and I still watch it thinking I'm going to catch something new. Yep. You know, it's like... Because otherwise, what are you going to do? Watch Family Feud? Yeah. I mean, come on, yeah. my wife does all the time. I'm like, What? Is there any lettering on here? I yeah, <laughs> it's weird the way we're programmed. I mean, I, yep. I don't know, I don't know well, what it is. That show was really good, but the signs really sucked. Didn't yeah. It? Okay. Just, do you find that you do that a lot? Like you're going around, you don't mean to, and I think it's what it's derived from is being self-critical. Yeah. So when you see somebody else's work, the first thing you look for is errors, and you, you know, instead of trying to admire it, it's like you're attuned to like looking for the, the, the thing that sticks out the most, and that's usually yeah. something. You know, they might be wrong with the kerning or something along those lines. You're like, yeah, oh, I'll, the layout. Or... I'll look at that, but a lot of it is, you know, I look at is... the colors. Okay. It's like, oh, I had a job like that. I wonder what he used for colors. Oh. You're like live bait. Well, you're going to use blue because of the sky and the fish jumping out. And, like, challenge yourself and go, no, I'm going to use pink and yellow or something. Well, it's got to work. Somebody's done it because every... For every move, there's a counter move. And in signs, it's uh, the rules are there are no rules. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I guess you could do that. Why couldn't you? Like, I always do everything in black and white. And then you can always add color. Because mm-hmm. somebody will always show you something. When you say, oh, you can't use green on that. Look at that. It looks great in green. Well, shit. So you have to be open to a lot of things. And if you're not, it, it's... You know, I know some, I only do these jobs. That's fine. Or give them to me. I'll Mm -hmm. do them. Yeah, but you got to put up, that's fine. But they have to come halfway to me too. You know, I know you only do this, but I do this. And a lot of times they don't know. I had a guy, I I lettered his trucks for 12 years. A farmer who's in an arc, seems trucking and all this. And he always had these trucks and he drove them into the ground. They were just pieces of junk. And he'd finally have to drag them to the junkyard and get another one. Well, I went to my buddy's body shop, just hanging around. He'd give me free paint. He says, hey, so-and-so's um, getting leased trucks now. He'll probably have them come have you letter them. Really? Leased trucks? Wow, what happened to him? He goes, I don't know. So the guy comes up, hey, got some new trucks. Got a white one and a red one. And I want you to hand letter them like you did before. Okay. We'll just leave that one here and I'll, I'll get to it and come back tomorrow. All right. So I got the pattern out that I used for 12 years. And I pounced it on a piece of white paper and I lettered it black. Then I shot it down in my copier and I scanned it and I did the whole thing in vinyl. And he said, I don't want those stickers. I want to hand paint it. And I did it the opposite. <laughs> and I made it look hand done. So he came the next day, and he was looking at it, and he came in. Looks great. What do I owe you? Didn't even look at it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he looked at it close and everything, and I said, well, it's this much. See, this is a white truck. You got a red truck, too, right? Yeah, how'd you know that? Oh, I was talking to Bucky at the body shop. Oh, yeah. So when you want that other one done, I can do that. He goes, oh, okay. Well, and I said, hey, before you leave, that truck is not hand-lettered. It's stickers. What'd you do that for? I said, because 
you're leasing it, right? Yeah. So in two years, what do you got to do? Turn it back in. Well, first you have to get that lettering off, right? Well, yeah. And I asked Bucky how much he would be if I hand lettered it. He said about 1500 because you have to sand it. Yeah. You have to put the primer on again. You got to make the lettering. You got to buff it. You got to clear it. But now you can peel it off. And I've saved you $1,500. But you didn't know it was hand lettered or not, did you? No. Because you just want it to look the same. And it does look the same. And I've saved you money. I want to hand letter it too. But I also want you to be my customer. So I'm looking out for you. And he goes, wow. I said, yeah, bring that red one by and I'll be ready. Oh, okay. That's all it took. Yeah. And he's telling people, well, that's not hand lettered. That's... Well, you still well, it looks the same. Mm -hmm. So you got to use the technology. Maybe it could have been better and all that, but he just leases and he's happy. Yeah. He probably tells somebody else. I've even done it where, hey, I uh, want you to do my truck. Well, I don't have a garage to do it. Take it up to the car wash there and clean it real good and let me know when you're there. And it's hot in there, you know, be 20 below where we live and I'll be there. So it sits in there, get nice and warm, and the doors are warm. I put the stickers on. There you go. Leave it in here a couple, 10, 15 more minutes, and then go. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Why should I keep that huge thing? Yeah. I don't want to do that. I'm the lettering guy. I want to keep it as small. I mean, I live in a gigantic church that mm -hmm. I bought for 25 grand three years ago. Mm -hmm. 40 pews in there. It's, it's like... A school gymnasium, 30-foot ceilings, it's huge. Is it big enough for, like, a letterhead meet? Boy, it sure is. <laughs> He's going to do it. 2026. <laughs> I want to do it the year after the 50th in Cincinnati. That way in Cincinnati I can say, hey, this was great, wasn't it? But you want to see something even better? Yeah. Oh, Because I like to set the bar really high. Monster trucks, strippers on buffaloes and parades. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Even had everybody had a, a midgets on stilts. <laughs> I think that was Wednesday. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But there was, <laughs> was wristbands. Uh -huh. And my buddies were taking my Studebaker. They they went and found a, a cattle tank and they put it in the back of the Studebaker. They went to the liquor store and they they all put in a hundred dollars. Four of them. So they had four hundred dollars worth of ice and beer and they drove around town giving people cold beers oh wow it it actually broke the shocks the shocks busted and were dragging oh, oh shit. Wow. which i didn't care but they put on their wwmd instead of what would jesus do? Yeah, yeah what would mike do oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day here was this geez it's sitting kind of low the tank was in there full of water it was like two beers left oh wow and they were having a blast. So when when do you want us there? <laughs> so this is I'm so, just saying maybe September 2026. 2026. We're definitely gonna be there. Yep. That's what we in the church, just trial. That would be something else, man. So from I'd love here, to go to a letter. Yeah. yeah. From here, you go to LA, right? The next Colorado class. Colorado Springs. Oh, Colorado, Colorado Springs, Springs is the next class. And then Bend, Oregon. Bend, Oregon. And then San Francisco. And then Colossal in LA. And mm -hmm. then San Diego. And then Wichita, Kansas, and then Sapopo, Oklahoma. Nice. But in between San Diego and Wichita, I go back to Southern Iowa and do the 30th anniversary of Wall Dogs. Oh wow! Oh, nice. And they're redoing the walls from the original. And I even found my original T-shirt. Oh, that's right. You were talking Just about it. Just tore up all the hell, and it's got a big dog on there with the brush in its mouth. And I don't think anybody has one of these, mm. so I'm going to be wearing that that baby what, what's the date for that i believe it's the august like 29th 30th to september 1st okay is that something that people could just show up to yeah or is it yeah yeah i should check those dates too but it's um uh, it's a little bitty town allerton iowa mm -hmm. and i went there way back then and i was just really scared and a lot of the first letterhead meets i went to which i tell people that means I say, I want to show hands how many people here are intimidated as hell. Almost yeah. everybody. Says, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I know what you're feeling. 
And it's normal. You should feel that. Mm -hmm. But guess what? We're all the same. Go up to the people you saw in the magazine or on YouTube and talk to them. That's why they're here. Mm -hmm. The letterhead movement is for the novice. It always has been, always will be. That's why there's no officers, no dues, nothing. Because we rebel against that. Okay. We want to be free and share and all that. And it stayed surviving because of that. You know what? That's that's a great thing to talk about and tell people because mm -hmm. for the longest time, I was always scared to just show up to something like that. You mm -hmm. know, I always thought you have to be invited to a wild dogs meet. You have to be mm -hmm. invited to you exactly, know, a yeah. letterhead meet. So, nope. like, we've always talked about how, how much we hope we get invited one day, you know, and you know, now knowing that you could just show up. Well, in the pinstriping yep. community, there's stuff like that, you know, yeah. like Ron Foreman's show. Yeah, you have to be invited. Like Peter Dye used you know? to have yeah. to be invited to that, you know, but I, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the, was it the Enclave or Conclave? No, the Conclave, yeah. Don't you have to be invited, invited to that one, though? Yeah. Yep. Invitation okay. only. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's really what we rebel against. And I was like, you know, anybody. And yeah. consider this an invitation. Yeah. And uh, when you go there, it even if you don't know anybody there, they'll be like, hey, where are you guys from? Yeah. Oh, Phoenix? Okay, come over. Originally California? Hey, that guy's from, may, have you met him yet? No. Well, here's your name tag. Here's your goodie bag. You're going to have fun. Hey, here's the schedule of events. And in your bag, here's some coupons for this coffee shop. Got to go over there. Mm -hmm. And... Pinstripers, hey, they're doing a bunch of cars over here later. You guys are really? gonna love it. And next thing you know, three days will go by and you go, What the hell just happened? This oh yeah. Has changed my life. And that's what I want. Like, yeah. I miss yep. those days. I you know, we do shows. We yes, do we a do. lot of shows, you know. Yep. But we do them. Um, they're all for charity. Really like minded people that's different. Well that's what's he doing over there? Oh, he's carving sign foam. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's doing gold. Yeah, I've seen that, but yeah, but go there and listen once and see that. Because there'll be people going, well, I'd really like to do that, but I yeah. don't know. They might be watching somebody pinstripe and go, but you want to try it? Come here. Oh, then, I there's... can't draw a stick figure. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I say when that story comes up? Because almost everybody uses that as their analogy. Yep. I'm like, well, when was the last time you drew? Oh, I was drawing in grade school. And they're like, well, what were you drawing? Stick, stick figures. figures. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, yes. well, you know what? I never met a kid that wasn't born an artist. You give them chalk. Give them crayons, they go to town. That's right. We just, some of us just don't stop drawing. That's all it took. Or pick it up later were, on. When they're a kid, the culture hasn't showed them right or wrong. Yeah. yeah. They're just like, oh, what do I do? They just mm -hmm. jump right. Oh, wow. And some are better. My second grade teacher taught me cursive. I got along with her great, knew her till the day she died. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad loved to dance, loved polka music. I'd go in there. I remember going in and, hey, there's Geraldine Tree, my second grade teacher. She comes over about half in the bag. Mike Meyer, I taught you how to write. Now get out here. I'll show you how to dance, too. Well, no, Geraldine, you get out here now. And she's just a little shit. So I'm out there trying to dance, <laughs> stepping on her feet. She goes, it's a good thing you know how to write better than you know how to dance. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, so you're better teacher, right? She was crazy. <laughs> you know, I remember seeing that up above in the green. We, And I always was doing it and getting in trouble in school all the time. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a cartoon. Yeah, I know, but we're not doing cartoons here now. Yeah, but, you know, we did the turkey. We had to draw around oh, the yeah. hand. Oh, yeah. I said, I don't want to do that. I drew a turkey that I saw in a book. She goes, well, that's nice, but we're doing this. Oh, okay, I'll do that. But, hey, here's my turkey. Yeah, I can't remember if I, you know, ever turned in something from math or English that didn't have some kind of doodle on it. Yes. <laughs> oh, always. <laughs> <laughs> I was notorious for that. I'm like, you know, you didn't finish all these. My the teachers would tell me that you didn't you didn't finish this assignment. I'm like, yeah, I know I couldn't figure those out. So why did you ask for help? Well, I kind of got distracted drawing. <laughs> 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 but look at this. So, it looks nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks nice. But you need to figure this out. So I stayed in math three for like ever. I mean, I went from one. To He's actually on his way there from here now. After this. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna go take that no, class. I, I actually, when I, once I got into like, uh, I, I switched schools and they seen what was going on and everything, and they're like, "You're in math three? and they're like, "Yeah." And you're like, "Well, do you know how to add and like do multiplication and division?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Barely. You're you're in you're in pre-algebra now. I'm like, and I started doing. It, I'm like, "This is easy." 
you know and it's just like you never i never got challenged so like that was one of the things that you know oh, changed my life i i suck at math yeah. but we've we've already been talking for about an hour and a half that's it what do I was mean just going to say, I know. sixth grade was the best three years of my life. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Hey, on, on, on a quick note, though, where could someone sign up for one of your seminars? Like, how could they reach you? It'd be Mike Meyer, signpainter.com slash workshops. Okay. And the information's on there. And I have a guy from Oklahoma named Joe Kraut, who's like my agent for it now. He took my workshop. There's so many people that have taken it, and a lot of them have ended up hosting mm -hmm. just like the one in colorado Springs. she took my workshop in march she's like hey could you come to colorado sure so many months later here we are and that's how a lot of them got going overseas mm -hmm. but a lot of it was the movie starting it. hey we're in art school can you come here yeah sure here sam take care of this and that movie i i truly believe that there could easily be a part two to that right oh, yeah everybody said that yes and and we've talked to them and they're just kind of huh but I still get on their ass going, you're stuck with us for mm -hmm. life. You yeah. make other movies, that's fine. But you don't realize the impact you have on us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And don't forget us. Please, don't forget us. Because there was the, I don't know if you remember this back in, I think it was February. It was called Sign Painters 10 Years After. And Sam did this. Okay. And he had as many people that were in the movie as possible. Well, I went up to Minneapolis because there was two guys in the movie there. Well, let's just be in the same place. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the people there were, because Keith Connect of the movie had died two weeks after it had been filmed. Is he the, the guy in the tattoo parlor or which one is? No, that's Ernie. Oh, Ernie. With okay. the dog. Yeah. yeah. Keith was the guy who did these hesitations. Oh, yeah. And he said, the power, the mm -hmm. power of that brush. Well, he was kind of the the spur for the letterheads and the IOAFS thing and all that. And he was on dialysis and they knew we better go film Keith because he's not good. And of course he died right after that. But his impact on people in the, the what do you call it? The Zoom, everybody's picture. Almost everybody was crying, oh, wow. talking about it. And our mic wasn't on, but I was like, what the hell's going on? Everybody's bawling their eyes off. <laughs> what are you? Come on, cheer up here. Yeah. So then they flicked us on, and, and this gal had an iron for ironing. And I had it. Oh. And I said, hey, how's it going? Well, it's really cold here in Minnesota. I'm trying to warm up. Ooh, this thing's hot, you know. <laughs> Come on, you guys, stop crying. Fire up. And they're just like, that goofball. Yeah. I said, well, this is what you want. You want me in here? This is how I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. This this is in faith and sam who did it the movie i said you guys i told you you'll never forget us we're here and look at what your movie did and they're like oh my god yes i, don't I said well you better start on another one she goes oh, that's what everybody says and i'm like well come on hit martin scorsese or somebody to help you it's Ken funny Burns. it's funny because uh just before you came out here to do the class i was talking to uh chris from mac yeah yep. And um, I was telling him, I was like, hey, I was reading up on some brushes, like, buying a little bit more. But he was, uh, I told him, I was like, oh, yeah, Mike Myers is coming by. We're going to have a workshop. And uh, he said, have you ever met him in person? I was like, no, I've been talking to him on the phone. He said, well, you're in for a treat. <laughs> he didn't disappoint, man. You know, tell him I said hi. <laughs> his dad, Mike Fast, was, you know, before Chris was in it, I knew him and then things I, I'd see him at letterhead meets him and his wife, Chris's mom would be mm -hmm. doing stuff. Greatest people. And they showed you stuff. And, and uh, he was getting on in years. And when I started doing the workshops, they said, Hey, we should have a, a brush with your name on it. I said, oh, Cause they were doing John Hennigan and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I said, well, yeah, I, I do need one like that. And they said, what? And I said, well, speaking of brushes, it's a, uh, it's a toilet brush and I want it to be orange and blue. And he's like, <laughs> no, a paint brush. I said, well, no, let's start with the toilet brush first and kind of ease it in. Cause everybody has a toilet and all that. <laughs> it's good for marketing. That's right. So we, we still, we're still working on that engineering of it. You know, we know yeah. what kind of oil we're going to use. Yeah. So we started doing the brushes and he sent it to me and I said, this looks good. So we did it. And then I went to the 40th letterhead meet in Cincinnati and his dad was still alive. He goes, Mike Meyer, get over here, you little shit. I said, what's up, Mr. Fast? 
and he would send me like dirty uh, things on Facebook showing girls tits and stuff. Ah. Funnier than hell and jokes and all this. He goes, you know what? I'm so pissed at you. I said, why? Our tax accountant just, they can't keep up. We're selling so many damn brushes because of you. I said, was that a good thing? He said, of course it is, you little shit. I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> so, well, thanks. I really miss that guy. He's great. And when I go there, I try to go there every time I go through to Detroit to get Alpha 6 paint. Mm-hmm. Well, I got to stop and see Chris. And there's the three ladies there that make the pinstripe brushes. My brushes are made in Germany. Mm. And when I was in Germany, they were like, what is this brushes made? It says Germany. Can we not buy these here in Germany? And I'm like, um, let me let me get back to you on that. Chris, I'm here in Germany. They got me cornered. Yeah. They want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so you tell them that I go to Germany every year and they have a contract they only sell to me. Yeah. I said, okay, all right, here it is, comrades. They're only selling to him, so you got to buy it from me. Okay, we have ways of making you talk. You know this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Old man <laughs> signs the papers. Now, your brushes are different than any of the ones I've ever used. Can you describe them? In, well, the uh, first uh, ones we why? did, because at one point, water base was coming in. Yeah. And, and they're like, and we had nothing to use. And he's like, what do you want us to make? And I said, something that works like one shot with quills, like the snapper. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why I named it the snapper, which is the name of a sign painter who would go to a town and snap yeah, jobs. And leave. Yep, yeah. So I called it a snapper. But the other one, the first one we did is synthetic. Okay. And we called it a mop. Because me and Dave Krell used to joke around. Okay, we're going to do these letters. What kind of mop should we use on that? Just joking like a mop on the floor. So I said, let's call it a mop. And I wanted something that we could use like enamel with water base. And there they are. But you can use them in oil, too. But you can't go back and forth. Once it stays in oil, it stays. Yeah, Yeah. because it'll wreck them. So they took off. And then he says, you want something else? I said, you know, I miss a quill. I know you sell the 179s, but I want my own quill. Oh, well, we'll send you some. Yeah, these are good. Let's do this. And the way the reason they're orange and blue, that was my colors. I was just joking. Well, they got to be orange and blue. And here they are. And then he said, we've got to have a number with these. I said, why? Because that's just what we do with the computer. Uh, okay. Um, I was born in 1961. That's it. There you go. Oh, okay. So it's been a great relationship with them. They're fantastic. You can call them. They send me. They used to send me stuff overseas. I would take. It was like a bale of hay, damn near brushes. Put it in my bag, and I would go overseas, mm-hmm. and just okay. Shops open. Here we go. And of course, you get some people. Hey, the hairs are falling out of this. Well, what I was told, there's certain cleaners you use that, oh, yeah. that get in there, and there is some glue in there, and it can break the glue down, and your hairs are going to come out. Yep. Because we can't be there all the time when you're cleaning it. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what what kind of hairs are you using? It's actually Russian weasel. See, and that's what I was getting at because yep. I've used, you know, blue, uh, squirrel, Kazan, yep. you know, of course, Taklon, Kalinsky, you know, Kalinsky, Kalinsky yep. you know, so there's only been a few select things, you know, blends as well, yep. you know, and synthetics, you know, mm-hmm. that are from different varieties. Now, synthetics always usually have a lot of snap. Some yep. people like it, some people don't. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I've always been, well, recently a partial to sh- like sharps. Yep. Because that that soft, and you have the gray squirrel too. I forgot about that one. Mm-hmm. But yours, man, I really like them because they have, for me, they're comfortable. Yep. You know, and they keep that edge really well. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I got to get me some before you take off. Well, what I wanted was a lot of paint. Yeah. And that's what a quill does. I like to have a shitload of paint on there because it, it makes a difference in the letter that I'm making. Yeah. Because once I'm going around with the stroke, I, I need a lot on there. Of course, it has to do with how you thin it. Mm-hmm. But with a regular other brush, I don't get as much paint. I need a lot of paint. On. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like sign painters, you know, because the majority of people I've been around, they've all been just, they'll do script. They'll do truck lettering and things like mm-hmm. that. But when you're doing signs, you know, this guy right here, I always get on to him because he'll use my paint when we're at a show. And I'm like, dude, you just filled the half of the cup up. I, you know how many cars I could have striped? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, right. dude. I forgot. You know, we're yep. just, that's what I'm used to mixing. I'm like, but I, yeah, that's the sign painting background because you're gonna do something big. Yeah, you know. So it's like, yeah, you would need a brush that would carry a lot, of, and they do. Well, you know, the overseas, the English guys, 
they never really saw that many quills when I started bringing them over because they they have uh, a brush maker over there named uh, Craig Craig Morton. He was like the the name of the football player with me. So I met him, mm-hmm. and he was telling me about the hairs because he knows. So the squirrel hair and especially the weasel hair very hard to get. As explained in my book, Sign Painting, the hair, like on a cat, they roll in the dirt, they come up and shake themselves off, and all of a sudden it's all gone. Well, how the hell did that happen? Or like a duck. If you nip the end of that off, then it kind of loses what it can do. Mm-hmm. But they get it and know right where it's at, and then primp it, mm-hmm. crimp it, so it's there, and it has these certain things that it does where it holds liquid and and that's why he uses those certain kinds and the funny thing about him he's been making brushes over there for years and there's the suppliers are hanover Mm -hmm. and rights of limb he makes brushes for both okay i've been over to letterhead meets and there's been older painters going i won't use nothing but rights of limb I know a lot I of guys. I don't use a mother. Well, it's the same guy making the same brushes. <laughs> a lot of guys used to uh, really talk about the old Lang nickel, like the yellow rockets. Oh yes. Yeah, I oh. never got to try one though. But you know, I've always a good wanted to. Story about that. So when I first met Don Springer, mm-hmm. um, skip school, went down there, drove around the block three, three times. Finally went in. I thought you get around a gas run around the goddamn block. What the hell do you want? I want to be a sign painter like you. Oh, you do, huh? All he had was yellow lang nickels, and he hung, he, he held one up and said, this is what you need, kid. Just get these yellow handle lang nickels. They're the best. Oh, okay. So years later, I still have some of his brushes in his mm-hmm. brush box, and there they are. So I was uh, doing a class in L.A., and I went to McLogan Sign Supply. And it's pretty much people coming in for vinyl. Yep. It's like, no, hey, yeah. I want to talk about it's the brushes. It's changed a lot. And the guy goes, well, we got to talk to so-and-so. Oh, okay. Well, there was a box of yellow lang nickels. No way. A box. What? I said, I want to see that box. Yeah, well, which one? The box. Yeah, but which one in the box? No, the, the whole box. box. <laughs> so he brings out the box. He said, yep, this is it. I'll take it. You take what? The, the box. box. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if we can do that. So we better get your boss over here. What? Uh, they're in the business selling this lady right? come over she goes is there a problem here i said if you don't sell me that whole box there will be you want the whole box yeah she goes you know we have two other locations right yeah and we got lang nickels there too i said well you better get them down here because i'm gonna buy them too who are you i said i'm mike meyer i do oh you at the school i said no but I travel around doing it, and I'm buying all the Lang nickels you got. Even if they're underneath your pillow, I want them all. And I'll be back in two days, because I'm teaching over here. If you can get them down to here, I'll buy them. Mm-hmm. You want a pint of blood for a deposit? I mean, I'm serious. She goes, no, I'll believe you. Two days later, I went there, and there was this huge box. Mm-hmm. And oh, I said, nice. Now, I'm expecting a discount because I'm buying a lot of stuff and I never gave you any hassle. She goes, I've already discounted it. What's the bill? She goes, 3500 She says, it was going to be around 5000 almost six. Mm-hmm. So what are you going to do with these? I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use maybe a handful, but the rest I'm going to sell to students so they know what this is about. Mm-hmm. Really? I said, yeah, because you can't find these. She goes, yeah, they're very rare. Well, thank you. Are they all gone? That's exactly what I was going to ask. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to ask. What if, I just you, want one. if you come up to Iowa, I'm sure huh? I could find something there for you. Oh, right? nice. See, but another story. <laughs> so related to that, WB Gold Leaf out of oh, Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Urban. Bill Meyer. Fantastic guy. Mm-hmm. Um, got to know him. Went to Sheboygan. Stayed overnight. He showed me all the gold stuff, the, the actual gold machine that hits the gold. It, press it. it. Yeah. And, and it has to be on its own foundation because when it was in Chicago years ago, it started wrecking the building. Mm. So they had to do it on its own cement. So 
He told me a lot of stories. He holds up the hammer. If anybody can hold this up seven seconds, he'll give you a million dollars. Nobody can do it. So I had a letterhead meet, and I said... It's because he's asking nothing but sign painters. We're not, <laughs> true. We're not the yeah. puppets. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll figure out a way and make one out of sign foam. Oh, yeah. This is our seven. Oh. So... <laughs> He, I said, you should come to this letterhead meet and set up your shop. You'll sell a lot of gold. I'll help you out. No problem. So we donated some. We did this. And it was almost over. And he goes, hey, I got some stuff in the truck. Should I bring it in? And I said, what is it? He goes, well, you know, I'm fourth generation, right? I said, yeah. Well, when my dad used to sell, he also sold brushes. Mm -hmm. But he stopped doing that. I said, oh, when did he stop? He said, I don't know, 57, 58. So what do you got? He said, well, I got brushes from 57, 58. He said, yeah, about there. They're pretty dusty. I don't know if they're any good. Well, bring them in. Oh, my God. They were like the Langnickels, but they were brown handles with varnish on them. Oh, yeah. I got a few of those. I got lucky. No, those he don't says, have varnish on them. Yeah, so the ones, some of the ones I do. He said, are oh, you yeah. interested in these? Me, no, and I said, one, yeah. just hang on. I'll be right back. You, you, you. Older guys, come here. I want to show you something. Look at this. Oh, what is this? I said, this guy has them. What's the story? Well, it's just his dad. Uh, okay. Well, I don't know what they're worth and all that. I said, well, just stop. Just let's figure this out. I think he came out of there with at least five grand. Mm. And that's I don't know. Else, huh? See, and that's what's so crazy because it annoys the heck out of me that people don't value how the things that are in this industry like we do yeah you know i came across you know i mean just this, something as simple as an electro pounce oh yeah you know yeah. that changed the industry when those came out yeah because i remember getting blisters from having to pounce oh. over cardboard my dad would be oh. like hey go do this cramps in your hand yeah exactly oh you know and then when electro pounds came in i'm like dude we got to get one it was like yeah. my dad's like they're too expensive. We'll never get one. Besides, you do it just fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dang it, man. It teaches you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he did teach you discipline. When I finally got one, I was like, man, this is a game he learned, changer. He learned how to get carpal tunnels. <laughs> yeah. And, well, then there goes that job of uh, slicing pizzas with yeah. a pizza cutter. But, I've, yeah, I've been trying to do that myself, trying to save some history. I mm -hmm. got I scored some uh, Grumbachers. They yep. were just... They didn't even have the dowel in them. They're just, just the heads for them. Yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, this is so cool. You know, but there's a few other things like just, you know, of the nostalgia part of it. Mike was talking about that today or yesterday about how mm -hmm. he used to have to buy just the, the yeah. ferro. With and then the, you had yeah, to get your own dowel to stick, put it yeah. in there. Someone told me that the, the way they used to do that was you would put it in a potato, leave it overnight. So that way the quill would get soft. Yeah. And then you would get the dowel that would so somewhat fit in there. So once it would dry up, it would tighten around there, and then you were go you were good to go. Really? Yeah, I can't remember. It might, it might have been Eric from Southpaw. I'm not sure. Uh, it was it was probably a real quill then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The real the plastic long one. ones probably mm -hmm. won't. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. The plastic ones won't do that. Yeah, yeah. But I remember I saw another post where it was Glenn Weisenberger. He was mm -hmm. going around for a coast, uh, not coast airbrush, but airbrush action magazine, yep. and they were teaching those seminars, right? Yeah. And they had a getaway in Florida. So when he goes down there, he's taking all these brushes, and then when he gets back on the plane, they won't let him take them Ooh. because of the whole TSA thing. These are weapons, possibly. So he was so pissed. Yeah. But what he did, he broke off all the dowels, and he said, I can take these, right? And like, yeah. So, he, yeah, he was pretty bummed about that. I know, speaking of overseas and brushes, there's some countries that are outlawing the natural hair. It has yeah. to be synthetic because of, of animals. Because of the animal cruelty. See now, let me let me get this straight because I'm not sure. Do you actually have to kill the animal in order to be able to make a brush? Yeah, it's like a tree. Well, it was already a down tree, so we took it. I don't oh, know. Okay, see, I was just curious about that. Yeah, I'm not sure because I've never seen the process of making a brush, but you know, I have been annoyed about certain brush making processes, like say, like a let's say a bobble. You gotta buy five to get one good one. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, oh, that's annoying, yeah. man. That is so annoying. Because when they're good, they're unless great. You, unless you buy them at the Spock shop. They're all good. <laughs> that's, right. that's Spock right here in Phoenix. But, yeah. I mean, there's certain brushes, man, man. Well, you get them, and they're great. There's uh, When I went down under, there was there's two brushes there. 
manufacturers. One is Hayden, mm-hmm. H-A-Y-D-N, not D-E-N. And then, can't remember the other one in Australia. I think Vipons, V-I-P-O-N-D. And they're actually a supplier too. Mm-hmm. So one of the guys in Melbourne says, do you want to go over to Vipons? Yeah, sure. So we looked at their paints. So, you got brushes? Yeah. And they were 10 times what brushes are. I said, well, I'm here. I'm going to get a bunch. So I got like five. Okay. I still haven't used them. They're wrapped in rubber band. I don't know what I'll do there. But the is, this, is this recently? Probably 10 years ago. Okay. So I was in Christchurch, New Zealand. And I was there before the big earthquakes and then after. So... I was using some Hayden's. I said, these are nice. He says, hey, the Hayden place. I'll take you there if you want after the meet. Yeah. So we go there, and there's a container outside, and that's the office now because you can't go in the building because the earthquake. The structural integrity issues? Only the people working there could go in there. There's a big crack in the floor, Mm -hmm. so they have all the safety shit. No one been there. Okay. So we're in the office, and I said, is the president here? Well, yeah, if you want to call him that, he's right there in the office. Oh, okay, can I meet him? He comes out, can I help you? Yeah, I travel the world painting signs, and I want to use your brushes. I'd like to see if I can get a discount, and I'll sell them for you. He said, no discount. You want to buy them? Tell the girls what you want. Oh, that's it? That's it. I'm busy. Got to go. And he left. Oh. So my other Kiwi buddies were talking to him, and I just said, well, just get me, I don't know, four, five, and six, whatever. I'm going to go out and have a cigar out here. And they're like, okay. And I ran in the building that you weren't supposed to be in. Huge building, boxes everywhere. I'm just like, what is this? I kept going, all of a sudden I heard this woman's voice. You can't be in here. What? You can't be in here, sir. What are you doing? Oh, what do you do? You can't be in here. She's in the corner, and she's got an apron on, mm-hmm. and here's the lettering brushes. I said, oh, do you make these? She goes, yeah, but you can't be in here. Well, I'm here. <laughs> Can you show me what you do? And she says, well, I might get in trouble. And I said, come on, don't worry about it. But she had this board, like an 8-inch by 8-inch board that was slanted, and she would grab the, the handles, mm-hmm put this thing around it, around the hairs, hold it on there, and then just take this knife and chop, and chop the, the head off it to a nice straight edge. I'm like, that's it? She goes, yep. You know, here's, she just stood there doing them all day long. I said, you're the only one that does this? She goes, yep. And you do these other ones? Yep. They had a pinstripe brush that was maybe eight inches long, mm-hmm. long handle and a dagger on it. Yeah. I've never tried that. Well, Buy one in the office, I will. And then my buddy who was with me, he comes, where are you? We're looking for you. I said, look, I found the lady that makes them. She's like, you can't be in here either. <laughs> well, we're here now. <laughs> so we took a picture with her. And we go home. And then the next year we come back. And I said, hey, can we go get some more Haydens? And I'm like, oh, you didn't hear. I said, what? They stopped making lettering brushes. Dang. Why? Did the lady retire or die or something? We don't know. They're not making them. But they make other brushes. Mm-hmm. Eyeliners, toilet brushes, I, I everything. Think, I think she did get in trouble then. She yeah. made <laughs> That's exactly what happened. She didn't fit in the suitcase. Why did they stop? I really had to push her head yeah. down. Why did they stop making them? They so, didn't. They are just making them in Iowa now. <laughs> so, That's horrible, man. I'm at this letterhead meet, and they told me, oh, you can't find Hayden. And the meet was over, and this guy was going to give me a ride to Auckland so I could fly back home. And he goes... Just hang around. The, I'll bring the van around. And I'm like, hey, what's going on over there? And it was like an open flea market thing. I said, can I walk through there? I might find something cool. And he goes, I know you will. So just go ahead. So I go over there. There's all kinds of knick-knack, garage sale kind of stuff. And here was a box. Mm-hmm. And I looked in it. No. Hayden brushes. All sizes, pinstripers. And I grabbed them. And the guy goes, hey, you like those? I said, yeah, these for sale? Well, of course they are. How many do you want? I said, probably the whole box. Ha! And I said, here. And I gave him my wallet. I'm an American. I'll be right back. What's this? I said, it's my wallet. with my ID and all that. That tells you I'm coming back. Hey, you 
yanks are crazy, but whatever. So I go back, hey, everybody, there's some Hayden brushes for sale over there. <laughs> right. No, really? Well, fine. Then. Two guys came with me. Then they rain back. He's not joking. This Hayden brushes. We just stormed the guy. Bought everything, and I said to him, hey, where's my cut? Look at all this I bought. You didn't think I was going to buy one. He's still a crazy yank. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so great. that's my I brushes I just love them because what they can do and one of the biggest things in the workshop you gotta take care of them and a lot of people oh those brushes I bought that it didn't work well what did you do with them mm -hmm. oh you're supposed to oil them what were you doing in the workshop I showed you and told you come on yeah brush care is so paramount you know yeah. how you store them you know what you oil them with you know, as long as you're doing something with them, as far as oiling, that's got to be the most paramount thing. Yeah. You know, because if you could, you know, save a brush if it gets a kink in it. Very, or very like. paramount. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, I remember going to a meet and there was this one guy complaining. Oh, we can't get good brushes anymore. This is just, uh, blah, blah. And Bob Bohonic okay. from Illinois was there. And he goes, I don't know. I think they're still pretty good. Well, what's the problem? Well, this one. So Bob takes it. And he starts a letter something. Beautiful script. Uh -huh. He goes, oh, I think it's okay. We're all laughing like, it's the operator. Yeah. Yep. Operator error. I mean, you can take, if you really know your letters, you can take a stick. Eddie. And do it. <laughs> Eddie, what, Eddie actually, yep. this, this, it's a true story. Yep. Did he tell you the story behind it, how that came about? Uh, No. Um, okay. I know it, but I don't, he I don't says think he told that, Yeah. If it came down to it, he could stripe with a popsicle stick. Yep. And he told me one time, you know how I know that? Because I had to. I I put all my stuff away. I was getting ready to leave the job, and I noticed there was some lines that weren't connected. He goes, dang, I don't want to pop my brush. I already got paid. I'm going to take off, but I don't want to let it go like that. And so he would had a mixing stick out that had still a bit of yellow on there. <laughs> so he went and he palleted that thing, and he got it up <laughs> on there. And he <laughs> did, Yeah, he touched it up. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, and I, could, I could pinstripe with a popsicle I mean, stick. And I might... can't draw a straight line. <laughs> 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 most most, most pinstripers can't draw a straight line, but we can get close. You know the, the little brushes that they use for... Touch-ups? Well, it's... Like the, model cars? Like when they put the that purple shit on uh, PVC. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, with the, the little what ball on the foam on the end. Yeah. yeah. I forgot so, what those are called. Mops. Yeah, well, they're definitely <laughs> mops. <laughs> Graffiti. My first job, at, a lot of times, because I was low on the totem pole, you're going out with so-and-so to put up that billboard. Mm -hmm. So I'd be on the ground hooking three together and then, okay, and then goes up. Then there's a guy up there, and you're in the freezing cold. Well, you got to go out on this one, and there's a little bit of touch-up on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here's the pattern. I said, pattern? If it's touch-up, it's a whole pattern. Well, take your brushes. Okay, well, I forgot my brushes. And these guys, are, well, we got everything up, kid. Time to do your paint and shit. We're getting in the truck. So I pounced it and everything. I got no brush. What am I going to do? So I'm looking in all these cabinets, and there was one of those brushes for put PVC on. And that's what I used. Oh, wow. Wow. Because <laughs> I had to. That must have took a minute. Oh. <laughs> that's a, and that's of course, a lesson in patience there. <laughs> got back to the shop, and they're like, this dumbass forgot his brushes. And you know what he did, you know? I thought they'd be, well, at least you got it done. Like, yeah. No, don't forget it again. What are you doing that? For? Yeah, but I did. You couldn't take a picture back then and show. But that's how hard they were. You dumbass. Next time you go, you got your brushes this time? You dumbass. And we're going to fuck with your your food again with your lunchbox. Oh, and gosh. I can't believe that story. That was wild. So well, maybe I can't believe that story. Christmas time, I guess we all got a, a turkey. Mm -hmm. But I was out with this other guy installing we come back in and everybody had been gone and, oh okay well merry christmas see you next week a couple weeks go by and, and i had to go out again and hand me this thing down and open up that back thing open up in the bucket truck this door and there's a turkey i said hey there's a, there's a turkey in here what is a turkey let me see that he comes down and goes that's yours. I said, mine. Well, yeah, the, some of the guys threw it in there. But you finally found it, huh? And I said, well, 
you know, it was cold. Oh, because it's it. Like, yeah, it's like, that wouldn't work here, but. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it'd be cooked when like, he found it. Because I thought, oh, he's not here right now. Let's just throw it in this truck. Maybe he'll find it someday. And I'm like, well, when were you guys going to tell me? Well, we weren't. And we didn't. Mm-hmm. So now I got to tell him that you found it. Are you sure? He goes, yeah, that's your turkey. What am I going to do? With it? We'll find somebody that can cook it. Oh. And I lived at home at the time. I bring it home. My mom said, what happened to this? It's been kicked around or something. <laughs> it's so dirty and the plastic and the netting on it was tore. She goes, throw this away. She was tough. It was yeah. tough, I tell you. Yeah. I gave my kid a bow and arrow set for Christmas. He gave me a shirt with a target on the back. I tell you, it's tough for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. There you well, go. Well, on that note, it's been two hours. We should probably cut it short because I know. We can are keep you guys going. leaving today? Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's definitely cut it short. Yeah, and you guys, are, you guys are heading Florida. to. No, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, social media. Where can people find you on social media? It'd be Mike Meyer Sign Painter on Instagram or Mike Meyer Sign Painter on Facebook or just Mike Meyer on Facebook. I've been hacked a couple times on Instagram. So I think we did it. This is the real Mike Meyer. Okay. Yeah. Or, I'll tag it on the video too. So yeah, and then yeah. I'll put it in the comments and stuff. So yeah. I made the mistake by saying, you know, I've been hacked. I see everybody says I've been hacked. I haven't been hacked yet. What have I got to do to get that well, done? And then well, I got hacked. There you yeah. go. Someone took I had that like challenge. Thirty thousand followers, and it was all gone. Yeah, I remember. But you know, I was happy with that. I wanted to just get away from it because sometimes it was when you come from old school. It's like I, I don't want to be attached to this damn thing. But you have to now. Yeah. 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 It, but th- there's ways around it. I mean, it's changed our lives, and some for worse with their kids. But, you know, you can use it and have fun. It, it's instant. It's good for business. Well, what yeah. would it look like? Well, I'll show you and I'll send it to you. Oh, okay. And can you pay me? Yes, mm-hmm. I'll send it PayPal. And I'll, that's what's really nice. Yeah, so definitely. I can't totally throw it away. I've wanted to a lot of times. Oh, yeah. Now, if people wanted to get your brushes or your books or your posters, where would they go? It'd be MikeMeyerSignPainter.com. Okay. I carry them on my workshop tours but it's it's more efficient if it's through the website because mm-hmm. it's always stocked and we have clothing and other merch stuff but uh, otherwise there's this guy named raul he's in new jersey and he sells them in an alley and he's got a coat he sells watches too mm-hmm. and that's a lie <laughs> just making sure you're listening out there wake up people now we on the website will you have uh, autographed cigars we're working on that right now, um, <laughs> but I always smoke them way down to the end. It's hard to even just get an M on there. <laughs> but, you know, when we were driving here, we found a guy on the road, and we stopped, and I just said, hey, you can't be laying in the road. Get up. I said, what are you doing? He says, well, I was looking for the old log in. I said, what? He said, yeah, the old log in. I was walking on the road, and I saw this car. And I thought, well, maybe they know. So I tapped on the window, and the people in the car were making love. They were having sex. And the guy rolls down the window. He said, what the hell do you want? And I said to him, how far is the old log in? And he said, none of your damn business. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I think I have. Oh, the applause? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be at the old log in doing two shows, seven to nine. Try the lasagna. Thank you very much. I can't hear it. It's, a, it's, a, it's clapping. And oh, is that oh, what it is? is? The applause. Yeah. There we go. I forgot the sound effects. But yeah, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you, Mike. Thank you, totally guys. Appreciate Love this it. Class. Definitely, if you can take his class, sign up for the next seminar. Follow him on social media. Get a hold of some of these brushes. They're amazing for lettering. You know what I want to do is come back in the winter. Yeah. And call it the Sign Painter Snowboard or Snowbird. Sessions. There we go. There, there people we go. People from up north will come here, and yeah. why wouldn't we? We're here right now. We're in July, and it's so yeah. hot. Yeah. But we just did it. We don't care. Yeah, yeah. we got to work in all times as well, the weather. It was a lot of fun, and yeah, we enjoyed it. Thank you for hosting. It's fantastic. Of course, thanks. I'm for glad having, you had fun. Uh, for, yeah, for having a great, great time here. I'm we glad we're it. able to have it. So, on we'll that be note, back again and again. Thank you so much. High five. You can't High five. see yeah. it back home. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll be we'll be in uh, your neck of the woods soon. I definitely want to go out there. So 
Yeah, so who knows? Own. Maybe we'll have a letterheads meet here one day. Yeah, I'll be there to help you. You never know. But anybody man, wants to, to come to my church in Chester, the uh, con confessionals. Oh, confessionals. They're still there. Oh, they're still and there. I can listen to. There's still a few people in there because they got a long story. Oh. They're big time sinners. I think they're vinyl people. Oh, they're vinyl. Oh, yeah. You sit in there until I'm tired. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, you're gonna go back, and they're still gonna be there. <laughs> thank right. you, Spock. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Thank right. you. Thank you. <laughs> See you next time.